Welcome viewers, Sydney Harbour, 13 February 2022, the final two races of the 100th running of the Australian 18-footer championship. A super day, a big, big day, big Sunday out on Sydney Harbour today. Plenty of interest, quite a tight contest. Um, and joining me, Andrew Buckland, today in commentary on the camera cap, Jimmy Beery steering and a special guest, Phil Barnett. Welcome, Phil. Thanks, Andrew. Bucko, thanks for having me again. Well, what do you think of the weather, Bucko? No, first of all, Cub, we're going to establish your family credentials to be in the seat. <laughs> Great. Four generations of Barnetts, Australian Championship winners in this class. Yes. Nice work. Ah, oh, look, it's a special day for the Barnett family. Um, to win that many Australian Championships uh, is uh, just showing the commitment the family's always had to 18 foot ski space. Yeah, no, and the re record is extraordinary. And, you know, it's, uh, I knew obviously your dad and your granddad, and for the viewers, the first time that I sort of connected with you guys was when you were sailing with your dad in the bow of the boat called? The Quick as Air. The Quick as Air. Quick as a nice big purple spinnaker. And your dad was concerned that he didn't have four hands in the boat anymore, it was a three hander. <laughs> Yes, there was a lot to be concerned about back then, but I tell you. Yeah, and you put the wrong spinnaker in the spinnaker bag, right? It was a special day. Um, we ended up winning the handicap section of that race, which I think the Colour 7 won that day, and uh, with you, Bucko, on board. Correct. And, and uh, we, we set the spinnaker going around the top mark the first time and realised that it wasn't the small spinnaker we required, but the number two spinnaker. <laughs> Hence, we had a bit of fun. And for the viewers, back in the day, we used to put three shoots in the boat. And so if you had a three-rig boat, you probably had eight spinnakers in your inventory. Anyway, and enough of that, but well done, Cub. So, Jimmy, um, just got a trickly East Nor'easter, which was showing signs of turning into a true Nor'east, but it's now just gone back to being a trickly gradient East Nor'east, hasn't it? Mate, very difficult out there today, Bucko. I'm glad we're on here where hindsight's our... <laughs> the retrospective coat yeah. will be fully deployed, OK? Fully deployed. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you know, I think we're going to yeah. see some people not so happy because yeah. they're going to go to where they think there is breeze and it's definitely not going to be there. It's um, like you're just watching the guys as they're coming down. <laughs> breeze is lifting off in areas where it's, yeah, eight, nah, you know, nah. 10 metres either side of them, they've got breeze. It looks pretty tricky, doesn't it? So, it Jimmy, um, and we're adjacent to the start boat, obviously. Um, we've got a six over two, so a two-lapper. Um, where do you think the windward mark is, mate? Um, I, I'm only going off your guess at 038 was the exact coordinate. So uh, <laughs> we, we're just starting down near, um, near Clark Island. And unlike that map there, but just to give you an idea for the landmarks, we're going, it's, the, that course is going to be bent a little bit left, so from Clark Island up to Bottle and Glass, back down here, two laps of that, and then stand by for the double point Super Sunday final. It's going to be very hard to work out, and lucky we've got, uh, we got yeah, a lot of toes, fingers and everything here to help count us. Yes. So I noticed you didn't have your abacus in your... Uh, in your, uh, no, in your bag? We'll be right, mate. We'll be right. We can figure it out. So but, um, for the viewers, the Bottom Glass Rocks is just a, just about a third of a mile northeast of the corner of Nielsen Park. So just it's the it's the boundary between sort of Watson's Bay Basically and Basically Watson's the Bay, Bucko, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so it's um, on a weak flood tide. So... We're not expecting anything much to happen with the breeze. It's very warm, you know, it's, it's the water's 24, the air's 27 or something like that, but there won't be any thermal. And, the, you know, the beach will be long, you know, little, enough flood to make it noticeable. And I think, Bucko, too, we're going to see a lot of boats heading off to the right, heading off to the left, coming back on that converging course, and we're going to be able to tell who's, uh, who's doing well. Yeah, yeah, but nothing, nothing simple about it. So, viewers, the um, race committee conducting a bit of an experiment for the last race, having double points, no discard for the last race. So the seventh heat, you have to count whatever your result is, which is a bit of an experiment, I think, but and one that I wouldn't personally encourage, as it, you know, tends to devalue every other race. But um, anyway, we, that's what's on the 
table and uh, we'll see how that plays out and hope that nobody comes to grief in any unfortunate way. So very similar to the Olympics gold medal race, Bucko. You yep. are yeah, but you, points. you can still win the Olympic gold medal without starting the last race if you're good enough. If you're good enough. That's right. <laughs> and you, there's no compulsory count there. So perhaps can't we better go through the point score because, um, you know, it, last time we were on air it was a week ago. And so top shelf and top the top six in order and do with a after a discard with five, Smeg second after a discard with eleven, Tech two, twelve after a discard, Rag and Famish next on sixteen and on twenty two points Snug Sailing and Lazarus Capital and then Yandu Finport, the Oak Four Pine Shore and Partner, Sea Tech. And C Tech the Queenslanders aren't back for this weekend. They're saving up their Saving their, their powder. Saving their powder for the Giltonin in a couple of weeks' time. So we, we don't have the added number of boats in the fleet today. They were sailing very well back and, last and week. They, were, they, yeah. they sailed exceptionally well. Yeah, yeah, and their scorecard reads pretty competently, doesn't it? 11, 8, 15, 6, 10. It's not bad for some... some Consistencies there. Consistencies the main, there. The thing. They weren't doing anything really stupid. They just weren't quite fast enough. No, um, and but, people would have... Um, Probably forgotten, but that Sea Tech was the New Zealand boat which won the JJ. So uh, they've got a good boat underneath them there, and they just need a bit more time on the water, I think. Yeah, well, they've got, um, they got Rob Brown helping them with uh, their training and everything, Cubby. So, okay. go Brownie, I know you're watching from up there. Yep. Yes, Sir uh, Robert Brown. But Cub, as you know, another 50 races on Sydney Harbour would do them a great deal of good, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Look, you can't beat actually sailing on Sydney Harbour. Like, the course is difficult most of the time. A lot of tide, lots of uh, wind advantage. Power boats. Power boats Pe and Pe ferries. Power boats. Yeah, lots of power boats. Like, you, you really... It adds another element to your racing. You, you can sail on a lake and not have any other traffic, nice clear breeze. Yeah. But here you've got tide, you've got big waves, little waves. No, it's a complicated track and lots of things to distract you if you allow it to be the case. And yep. quite a, a lot of discipline required to actually race the boat well amidst some surrounding white noise, we'll call it, I suppose. <laughs> but on, on that, I've noticed too this year, Cubby, like for those that don't know, uh, Phil Barnett or Cub is a, is a ferry master uh, for Sydney Ferries, drives the big green and gold ferries and now the new Emerald class ferries. Um, I've noticed a lot of the ferries are sort of slowing down, giving way, ducking and weaving a little bit more than normal, especially the freshwater class ones, which we know have orange diamond, they have right away. Um, is there something being said or is it just uh, oh, everyone's, look, everyone's chilling? I don't think anyone wants to get involved in an accident. You know, there's a lot of paperwork these days. Jimmy, um, just to correct you slightly, the Orange Diamond is priority over sale. So, yep. you know, you can't just run someone over and, and get away with it. Yep. So, uh, and the new Emerald Class ferries actually don't sport that Orange Diamond, so they now have to give way to the boats like anyone else. So yep. um, it's probably better for the sailors. That is, and, yeah. No, it's been really good, been really noticeable. All right, five we're minutes. We're under the, five uh, minutes. Five minute sequence. Yeah. So just a couple of little bits of housekeeping, Jimmy. The compass bearing 038 to the windward mark. I bet that's a product of one Jeremy Witty on the start boat, a former Qantas captain. No doubt. And he's gone. It's 038, not 035. The rest of us are going 040. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. And a shout out to our colleague Peter Shipway on holiday in Noosa. Hope you're having a good day up there, Pete. Shipway. And, uh, and not getting too sunburnt or, you know, whatever. He did well Spoiled. to get a day off on the very super Sunday here at Double Bay. That's right. So, yeah, folks. I, I, I snuck cup, cup um, on the uh, books before the word got out of uh, a few of the old old Aussie champions and families are all on the uh, JBW. So I secured him before he got the call up for that. Yeah. And less than four minutes to go. <laughs> Uh, Cubby, which end are we starting, mate? You're the tactician today. Well, uh, I'm in two minds with this race today. I don't have a favourite. Yeah. Um, I've got three trains of thought. Three. Three. I, I like the rookie team uh, Rag and Famish, Harry Price. I've been following his career for quite some time. If there's some thinking to be done, I know Harry's going to be right in there. 
My uh, second train of thought is with the Tech 2 boys, when the going gets tough. I think yeah, the, tough, yeah. the tough needs to get going, and yeah. I know Jack's very keen yeah, they've got a few points to make up, so... Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, but the other one, uh, the Andu with Sebi and Maddie Center and Sammy Newton. Yeah. They've got a little bit of a boat speed advantage. They have at the moment, indeed, and the boys yeah. have all been working away on that. But, Cup, where are we going to start? Which, how are we going to get out of the blocks? OK, I'm, I'm liking the boat end this time, and there's, there seems to be just a few little easterly yeah. shifts. Yeah. But... I, and come, I'd reluctantly agree with you. Well right. done, mate. Just inside three now, three, three, sorry, two thirty. I think as you progress across the channel towards Bradley's head, there seems to be a few light spots, and that'll be a bit of a sticky yeah. point for some of the boats. Yeah. So we made the point at the beginning. It's not a conventional funneling nor'easter. It, it was showing signs, but it ceased to funnel, and it's now just this sort of mildly turbulent east nor'east, really. Yeah. And lightened a little bit as we're looking at it up the less than three minutes to go and uh for the viewers today's race named after lenny, lenny, heffernan. lenny heffernan who was a a boat building legend in the class and uh lenny five national titles and one jj we'll talk about that a bit more later but also probably interestingly so with jackie hamilton on the main sheet a a true legend of the sport and a Leading sail maker. Absolute but probably vision. the lightest bloke to pull the main sheet on one of those old boats, I would say. He was a very small man, but uh, very smart. And very skilled. Indeed. Very skilled. All right, they're racking up, Cub. Less and than two minutes to go. Looks like Tech 2 Insurance Partners and the Yandu now made the choice to be toward the lured end. So we've had a bit of rain in Sydney the last uh, few days, and the yeah, sun's, yeah. sun's like popped out. It's going to stay out away this afternoon. That start line looks pretty uh, special there. Crowded yeah. will be the word I'd be using, Cub, in fact, wouldn't you? Do you think there'll be any yelling there, Mugger? I just heard some. Yeah, <laughs> Bowmane Slokes have fallen over onto, uh, onto port and bouncing off the side of Appliances Online and a few other boats in there. Tech 2's just dropped onto port to come a little bit closer to this boat end. Just stepping up to the pack. He's going to compress him, which he did the other day, to great effect. There is actually quite a gap here at the uh, windward end of the start line. Yeah. So that, but the breeze a little bit lifted off now where we are, Cub, and we're just 30 yards away from the committee boat, so problematic. But so we've got a pretty good view of the start line there on the, on the camera. Perfect. 30 seconds, a little less than 30 to go. They look a little bit advanced to me, Cub. 30 seconds, not too bad. Not too bad, but not advanced. <laughs> and I've just noticed it says 045 on the back of the boat now. Well, they changed it on us. They okay. changed it on us. Good on them. Got Fisher Pikel trying to work his way a little bit closer and, to the start and, boat. And notes down the other end trying to own it. There's a few over. And that would be... Ooh. No. Well, the sound signal didn't sound. The flag's down. It looks like a clear start. Okay. That's what he's thinking at the moment. <clears throat> no sound signal, was there? No. I don't oh. think we're, uh, we're underway. Not audible to us anyway. Great stuff. So big pack in the middle. Tech 2, high and slow, giving him all something to think about. Smeg in that group, Finport, Noakes Blue, Ilvi, and Andu to Leward with Yandu. And where did Noakes get to, Cup? I'm just trying, he's uh, at the pin end. He's right down at the right pin with your partners. Yep. Yep. Copy. Okay, so the... Uh, Andrew pretty clean in the middle to lured of Tech 2. Now, uh, Johnny Winning's right next to uh, Andrew down there. He's um, shown a fair bit of form. This year with his number one rig, all the boats. Did you mention all the boats with their number one rig in? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, viewers, we didn't say that, but inherent on the idea that in the idea that the wind's about ten knots is that everybody's got the big rig in. It's just a so shame. Down range a bit here, they're just three strings. Plenty of high slow sailing going on. Jimmy, who's one that's tech two? Leads presently, yep. Yeah, I think so. They're if just, they can um, cross. I think yeah, they, they no, might yeah. be able to. So tech two, probably Tech 2 playing a bit of a waiting game with Andu here, I think. 
This is where we was concerned that there might be a few light patches in the breeze and uh, it sort of sucks you in towards Bradley's head here and then it can spit you out if you don't go back to the east. And is tacked and tech two follows straight away, yep. as you'd expect. So Andrew's just got to try and break that and they're all in sort the good, of loose little cover All deck. in the good compression of Bradley's head. And this is now the stronger side cub, I think. There's a bit of pressure here coming yep. from Bradley Shaw. Yep. Just on screen there is the brand new Noakes sailing. And he's in pretty good condition too. So he's come off the leeward end far, not quite fast enough to cross four pines. Not but, quite. But not bad. And he won't cross Smeg either, I don't think, really. I think he'll get Smeg. Yeah. Right, there's Smeg on screen. So the leaders are Andu, Tech 2, Noakes, and Four Pines. Although perhaps Four Pines might have the duck Smeg here. Ilvi showing out well also. I just heard from the from the starter, Longy. Um, he was saying, clear start, they've got a problem with the horn that they're now working on. So that's why we didn't hear a horn. That explains the no sound signal. <coughs> that's correct. So I was, just, I was watching the seconds pretty carefully, Jimmy. Yeah. But, you know, they were right up on it, but I didn't think anybody was actually over it. You know, just on that first glance, you know. So here's the battle here, shaping up between Tech 2 and Andu. Andu stepped out just a little bit there. Yeah. Cubby. Tech 2's got the advantage. He can come back to Bradley's, but yep. Andrew's showing signs of dangerous speed. Okay. Travelling with Smeg, so just nice, but probably in about fourth. It'll be interesting to see. You can, um, with Tech 2 and Andrew sort of mid fleet, on the far side in the distance, I can see the Finport who's chosen the uh, most easterly track to the top mark. The, and, the um, Chris Nicholson 2000 Olympics yeah. track. <laughs> <laughs> so, there we go, Finport's tacked. This will be interesting. Tack two, as you suggested, Bucko, back to Bradley's. Yeah, and he's just going to get around the back of this incoming ferry. Cubby, one of your colleagues. One of the colleagues. Yeah. I think. But Andy's never minded legging it out and extending a few less tacks, have they? So, see how that goes. There seems to be a little bit more breeze where Andu is at the moment. Royal Oak, four points just in front. Oh, oh. there's a hookup. There's a hookup. Lazarus and Royal Oak. Just locked together here. That's a bad way to end your yacht race, isn't it? Tech two on screen. Did you see what happened, Cub? I didn't didn't see the actual. Problem. I think it was just yeah, wing to wing, hooked up a couple of trapeze wires. <laughs> and has got, got himself into a bit of personal space out there, Bucko. Do you think? Yeah, but yeah. I think in the middle of the harbour where we are, and we're the between us and Andrew, there's not very much wind. Nothing. There's no breeze in the so, middle. So a bit of a lift off in the middle of the harbour. The water a bit too warm and the turbulent. Not not too much flow down at the bottom level here. We'll see. Tech two's come off Bradley's looking over our hip there. Got a bit of a mix like we were talking about just oh, yeah, before yeah, the start. Yeah, We've yeah, got yeah, yeah. We've got boats out to the east, close to the Rose Bay, and then we've got boats going back into Bradley's Head. So, Andrew from the drone coming back, and Tech 2 coming off the other shore. They will meet in about 30 seconds' time. As That's long tech, as... two, tech 2, top right of screen. Yeah. And Tech 2 clearly in front, I would suggest, Cup. I'm liking Tech 2 there. He's in good breeze, Tech 2. Yeah. Uh, no, just don't and Do seems to be on a bit of a header there at the moment, so he's knocking away from the top mark. The two, uh, Tech 2 should cross and do from where we're sitting. Yeah. Here's the cross. Tech 2 just ahead. 
folded him straight back on him. Oh, Cubby. And who would have thought? Oh, well. Nice tack on the tick too for a downrange medium air tack. And that's as good a clamp as you can make, isn't it, Cub? Well, if I well, was Andu, I'd be bailing out. Unlike Marcus's one on the, the Lazarus on the Royal Oak about three or four minutes ago. That was a bit close. <laughs> a bit too close. That was a proper clamp. OK. Tech 2 looks to be heading back into uh, the Bradley's head side of the course at the moment. So we saw Tech 2 do almost an entire first beat before the start, which is a little bit unusual in 18 footer circles. Do you think there's a little bit of nerves at play here? The Tech 2's the, uh, no, he's just, the reigning Australian champion. Just trying to leave myself with no excuses, I guess, Cub. Yeah. I, I don't. They're a pretty nerveless bunch, really, those boys. He's looking at um, potentially winning his third Australian Championships in a row. Young Jack McCartney right. and his crew. But everybody's struggling to find wind. And, Jimmy, this might be the case where you've got to just step across to the east now, yeah? Absolutely. Like, looking over here to the, the left of screen at the moment, there's virtually nothing there, is there? So Enjoy It doesn't it. look like there's a lot over at Shark Island either. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, but the other comp compression is against yeah, the, the other compression against the shore, right? Against the shore at, at Nielsen. So I'm seeing a little bit of breeze towards the top mark, so coming down directly down from the top mark. So uh, Tech Two's shaping up for it, and Do's gone in ch chasing it. The Royal Oak Hotel the having breeze. another good race today. Breeze gone right there, yeah. Yep. So this would be pretty interesting. But Andrew's tacked in almost very little wind, but. And Tech 2 no longer leads. Not <laughs> even close. No. This is the zigging and zagging we were talking about. And Andrew's well in front. For the time being. Yeah. Andu and Tech 2 on the screen now. So that Andu, who was probably 10 seconds behind, is now like 20 seconds in front. If we're all yep. within the putt pace of about 100 metres. That's roughly right. And this is lack of breeze. The boat's very sensitive. Once the breeze below about seven true, it's a steep curve of going slow, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. We've got a bit of Finport and yep. Royal Oak four points on the screen. So, Keegan York was the one that went to the east early, so he's yeah. in a good, good shape at the moment. Finport's tacked. We're talking um, about the young guns on the rag and famish. They seem to have gone furthest to the east. And they're fairly close to the lead, actually, too. There's he's the new notes left on the screen there for you. Bucko? <coughs> yeah. New, new rig on the notes, looking pretty nice. Plenty of money been chucked out of us, for sure. Busy week for those boys, putting that boat together and getting it out for a sale. Busy month. They were out Wednesday, weren't they? Yeah, they first start with Wednesday, so. It's a gutsy call putting putting that all together for a couple of heats today. Well, they focus on the Giltman and, you know, good on them. Okay, so probably Reagan Famish about fourth or fifth. But looking out the other side, down the ferry there. And I think that. This easterly group is going to lead when they converge. Best pressure is just here, Cub. Just in front of us here, Bucko. But I'm just looking again up the course, and it seems to be very patchy up there. So now you're the navigator, mate. Did you find a windward mark for us? <laughs> is it that? Well, we're looking in the right direction. I can. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll figure it out. I'll have to put the binoculars up and have a look. It'll turn up. So the two boats here just on screen, Tech 2 leading Shore and Partners. Shore and Partners has been a bit up and down this season, had some good races. Yeah, they've had a bit of trouble with crew. Cubby, as you know, like the combination is key critical to um, anything, and Lockie's had quite a few injuries, he's a regular yeah. bowman. And Tommy Quigley did a great job last week, and he's in the bow again today, so let's see what happens. But Tech 2 taking a bit of risk here now, Cub. There's a, there's a couple of lines here, but you want to be crossing your fingers, I think. But that said, we're yeah. going to get a perspective here now from, and and do in the distance. Tech 2 may have just regained that lead. I'd say not even by a little bit, cut by a lot. He's got that 30 seconds back. Oh, for a sure. minute. 
Yeah. <laughs> so the Gun of Snakes and Ladders has proven difficult. We're just travelling with Tech 2. We're alongside more, more or less in the camera boat. And you can see Andu left of screen. They're still second or third, but they've certainly given a fair bit back. He's, um, he's out of the running tide on this side too. I'm wondering if that's helping a little. Uh, mostly wind cup, but yeah, every little bit counts. No, yeah, you know, it's a good, good shot there. So it gives you guys a absolute drop back so we look. can pick up and do behind Tech Two. And Tech Two just a little bit of dial drums and they're about to stand into a new line. Of, there they go into a new line of pressure and Are we um. Off they go. So what's our top three, Bucko? Tech two in the lead currently. Maybe Andu second and Shuram and Partners third. Yeah, there's no one no one to the right of us. So yeah. what you're seeing there is uh, yep. yeah, there's the yacht race and that is it. And like Nokes, Nokes coming back, leading the pack from the that have been in the middle of the stream, which doesn't look to have been a good idea. So it's a game of find a wind against the headlands, more or less cub, I think. Well, as Brownie used to say. Don't go where the wind ain't. <laughs> well, that's good advice. Easy interest me. He gave me that one for free. <laughs> Easy money. All right, so Tech, tech 2 still holding on. Well. Put the mark bearing and distance on the chart, shouldn't we, Cup? Yeah. So it's a, it's the, the top mark's a little bit further up than what I thought. It's um, 1.5 you know, in the vicinity of Watson's Bay. Yeah. yeah. It's almost at the the it's almost at the Boy. Yeah, the Boy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's 80 percent of the way to the Eastern Channel. Yeah. Ch uh, but yeah, we're doing windward lords today, so Australian sailing mark. So I'm, I'm thinking um, they're already having a good look around the course. They've got to make some decisions about which way they go on the downwind. So uh... yeah, well, Tech, tech Two, they, as you know, Cubby, they got out here real early. Like we we we, we leave the, the yep. dock at two o'clock um, to get out here on course to have a bit of a look ourselves. And Tech Two were out here. They watched them work all the way up the harbour, or you know, up towards the heads, and um, run down. They dropped their spinnaker halfway. They had another bit of a look, and then they, they, you know, continued on their merry way back down to the start area. But um, you know, it's important for them to obviously get out here, get a gauge of what the course is doing. Um, knock off of the tech too, but uh, he, he's in good water there. Um, there's no one chasing him. He's got a comfortable lead. Um, Jeez, you'd think he'd tack back now, though, wouldn't he? he? Knows that the breeze is on the right. So anyway, there is. I'm, I'm just watching the crew. You look. Uh, Jack's looking around. He looks like a jack in a box in that boat. No, he's, he's onto it. <laughs> okay. Very comfortable lead at this stage. But as we've seen, since the start, that can change within a matter of a couple of minutes. Tech 2 inevitably just coming back to the right. And so he'll go all the way to the starboard tack lane on, I would expect here, Cub. So maybe just a loose cover for the yeah. Tech 2 on the rest of the fleet. Okay, he, he can't... Too early in the racing today to uh, go out on a bit of a... on your own. No, his ambition is to get there with a, with a bit of a lead and get the shoot up. And yeah. once he's done that, he's probably... Nobody's going to catch him and if something really strange happens. Some of the earlier races this season, I've been watching the Tech 2 and he hasn't excelled in this lighter breeze. So... Um, Maybe the scissors have been out during the week, a little bit of sail recovery. Oh, no, they're working. They're working. Yeah. Absolutely, they're working. But we haven't been in this sort of eight to ten knot stuff, have we, though? There's Andu, just Andu. off steel point. Just tacking. So he's done the traditional route up here, Cub. Yes. You and Chesty Trev used to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Chesty Trev sailed yesterday on a 16 with, uh, with Zach. We saw Mary. Trevor Barnabas this morning on a bit of a chat. A bit sore. Well, he, he was <laughs> he was loving it. 
So a few miles under the bridge with Trevor and um, you know we managed uh, an Australian championship together in the Chesty Bond back in the day. Very Correct. capable captain, Captain Trev. Yeah. So, Carb, have a look at that. It looks as if Tech 2 stepped out and, in fact, looking backwards there, it, you can see Yandu, they, they might be into the picture. And Noakes also coming from midstream, not too bad. Tech 2 getting close to the ferry there, but he's tacked away anyway. He's the crowd favourite. Oh. Uh... The cheer went up on the ferry. Yep. The ferry's quite packed today compared to normal, so good on everyone for getting out there. And we've got the JBW, which will be presenting um, with the, presenting the, uh, the Australian Championship ribbon at the conclusion of today's proceedings. Subject then, to protest, just subject to well, <laughs> the ribbon ceremony will go ahead regardless. Yeah. Bucko, yeah, but uh, no, that's right. So just coming in from the western side, Bucko, Shaw and Partners seems to be on a little lift here at the moment. He's um, and he's in the contest. He's maybe jumped from third to second. Yeah. So we're travelling with Tech Two. Just a great shot. Beautiful. Isn't it? That drone shot is unbelievable. Looking at every little movement those crew are doing. Beautiful. And he didn't go to the ley line because the ferry covered him. <laughs> Well, and I don't think it did him any uh, harm, no. Um, it's, it sent him back where he needed to be with all the others, I think. And oh. on, that, on that shot of Tech 2 that we were just on, Cubby, one of our questions last week was why do skippers continually just sit there holding on to the, uh, the trapeze wire? Got no. any, uh, any insight for the viewers, mate? I think all the other crew have a rope to hold on to and they're constantly adjusting the... Um, the trim lines on the mainsail and the headsail and everything. I think this, the, the skipper basically just needs something to help him balance. Yep. So uh, it's a balance thing, Jimmy, for sure. Takes a little, takes a little bit of the of the bump out of the out of the sitting on the wire. Yeah, I used to hum a lot. Yeah. Just stand there and hum to myself while I was thinking. Can Any particular can, song? Or? Can be, that's yeah. too much information, all right. <laughs> so here they come, and Shaw and Partners made a pretty good fist of that, didn't they? Yes. Yes. You know, there's another boat that's jumped in there as well, John Winnings. Yeah, no, we mentioned him a minute ago, mate. He's yeah. up to third, I would think. Although, Rag and oh, Famish. Yeah, Rag and Famish. Yeah. Hardest ride. I went the other side of the ferry, got closest yeah. up to the ley line. Here we go, the wider shot now. You can see Rag and Famish is right in amongst it. So this is the best beat we've seen from Shaw and Partners. Tech 2 just while. about to round mark number one. In not much wind either. Ooh, funny, 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 funny. Is he going to jibe? Jibe yes, said. He is. Yeah. Probably the right thing to do. Second round, Shore and Partners. Third, Rag and Famish. The, the rookie team. Hardly rookies. <laughs> if you haven't won a world or national moth title, you can't be on the boat except for poor old Harry in the bow, you see. So. All right. There's a little bit of a slow set there. Windward sets are always slow. When you set that spinnaker on the windward side, it's a slow set. Yep, and the fleet really been dropped here. A little hole at the market, so the rich got richer there, didn't they, Cup? Yeah, definitely. Royal Oak Four Pines round in fourth position, followed by Yandu, John Winning. Andu's dropped out, Bucko. Yep, zigged a couple of times when they should have zagged. Yep, paid, paid full price. Six position, chosen to do a lured set and run out into the middle of the harbour. Yeah. Smeg, I don't know what Smeg's up to. The spinnaker's still not set. Uh, they had to make they made their choice after they went around the mark, I think. Uh, they're looking at the situation of could they sail cleanly. Okay, good. Good race by Ill uh, and a vet in Noakes Blue in a good well, spot. There has been a problem clearly on the on the Noakes just tacking to, in the back back left of the shot. They've had some issue because they've they were in contention for the for the top five of the mark, and they're counting from the back now, nearly. I think there's been a reasonably big wind shift to the uh, eastern side of the course. All these boats now are reaching into the first mark. There's the um, fin. 
So the um, the order on the course, folks. Tech two, clear leader, Shuron Partners, Putty Rag and Famish, Yandu, Royal Oak, Four Pines, and Smeg next, and he'll be after them. Pretty hard for anybody to get into that group now, Cub, isn't it? I think uh, the advantage here for Tech Two is he's a little bit lower than the rest of the fleet. They're all starting to get sort of sucked up underneath Steel Point. Yeah, you Rag got... and Famish is going to have to job out of there shortly. Yeah. But there is good wind, at least at the corner, so no, I don't think a big drama, but just two extra jibes, possibly. And Tech 2 will work pretty hard to minimise. The jibing is quite expensive in this wind speed. And let's face it, you, you've got to sail where the wind is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. it'll be interesting to see where Tech 2 goes down the run, Cub, because he's done the best survey, hasn't he? He's been out and done his homework. Yep. All right, and still comfortably leads. And he's now lifted up, but he's in great pressure. Just the angle's not great, but he's in plenty of wind, so he could easily just jibe. And here he goes in the far distance on Cam. Beautiful jibe for seven, eight knots of wind. So the two red spinnakers, obviously Tech Two in the lead in the distance, but uh, Shaw and Partners, Shaw and Partners in a nice second position at the moment. Yeah, and they put about a clear space of about 20 seconds to the next group. And the thing, I think the thing in, in Jack's favour is, is having the Shoreham partners in that second place and they're starting to get a bit of, bit of a gap to the Andu, which yeah, uh, yeah. is going to help the overall point score. So you've been reading Jack's mind, or Louis oh, or Charlie's? Oh, I think. <laughs> sort of Andu in fourth, fifth position and at the moment. Just the... jived out again and do. Sure yeah. partners on screen. But Jimmy standing there shoes you'd be scratching your head a bit wouldn't you? Well Buck I was just a zig and then they should have zagged like yeah uh, it was uh, yeah I think they got looking at them they got good bait speed like they've dropped off and come back dropped off come back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's yeah, yeah. I, I know Ian Murray was saying that He's very happy with the big rig on the Andu. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, look at this boomer that Shore and Partners just jived into. It's, um, so it wasn't the best jive, but it's good. It's good, good angle. And I just sort of seen now the uh, Tech 2 step a little well, bit further out in. Andu on the screen, who we're just talking about. And yeah, Andu just above them. Very much of the MG running in eight knots of wind. There's about 15 degrees difference in the angles they're running as well. Andu's sort of lifting up into Clifton Gardens. And that's Tech 2 at the top of the screen, just behind the ferry for the viewers at home. And, uh, rag on the and the ra rag and famish on the left of screen. Wow, but it's a big, it's a big spread out, isn't it? So for the viewers, these boats jibe through just a bit less than 80, 80 degrees in this wind speed. The jibe angle is about 75, 78 in that range. Just on rang, smeg, andu, andu. There's the chasing pack. And the rag look, looks like they've gone quite fast to me. They've got essentially a very similar spinnaker mould to the one on Tech 2. Somewhat recut version of it what's called the North New Zealand mould. So the current standings, Tech 2 leads comfortably. Shore and Partners is chasing in second, and the Rag. The Royal Oak and the Rag are close for third, fourth, yep. Yep, yep. And the Ilby with Jono, um, Jono Witte steering, he's, he's gonna be on for the JJs. We ran into him yesterday and- Smeg's made a steering. move. Yep, so on the Ilby, John O'Whitty, Lachlan Doyle and John Walton having another good race. And they do like light air, those boys, and they haven't, they're far from out of it. First and second there on screen, left of screen's Tech 2, and then Shore and Partners there. I think that's called a clean pair of heels in the cup. Oh, he's, he's jumped away down this, this run, yeah, and yeah. he's probably only about two minutes from the bottom mark at this stage. Not even that. <laughs> Bucko, there was a question during the during the week was thrown uh, by one of the viewers about when you say it's off the New Zealand mould, 
can you just elaborate for them at home what you mean by off the mould? Like, you know, it's yeah. they send the mould out here. To, <laughs> you know, that, that was the, that was the question. So, you know, you're the uh, you're the sail maker on board here, or the so help I'm us not, out. I'm the recut man. Yeah, dude. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so a spinnick is still made by, you know, seaming together or gluing together, you know, cut panels, and they're not formed on moulds. We're talking about the, the, you know, the computer cutting mould, which three-dimensional shape in the computer that, 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 you know, is described by, you know, what's the shape of the loft curve, what's the shape of the leech curve, what's the shape and broadside distribution of the cross-sections and so on, a perfect three-dimensional representation. And, um, you know, the two sails on the two leading boats aren't the prettiest sail, quite a lot of twist and not very deep, but they seem to be pretty effective, so. Yeah, please, yeah, on our short numbers. And there's some pretty looking sails in the fleet, but people are complaining they've got a lot of heel force and not enough forward force. Yeah, and so and that's the other idea behind, you know... The but are, are the sales getting made in New Zealand or do they get sent the file over here? No, for they send to be the made? file. Right. Yeah, they yeah. send the file, exactly. Long and short? Yeah, long and short. <laughs> and one of the other ones, mate, is, is the 18s a development class? And T-foils on rudders, have they ever been trialled, used? Well, it's a, it's a one design hull. It's, it, it's a couple of couple of restrictions about sails and sails and masts and lifting foils have been trialled but not presently permitted. Right. So Kelby, you better put the stopwatch on here, tech two. Oh, I've got the two minutes. So while you guys have been chatting about uh, sails shape and design, we've had a little bit of a, a run here by the Royal Oak Four Pines pu pushing very hard for third spot. Take two just around the mark there. Yeah, go back to Cubby, Royal Oak. Yeah, so we just turn to see the cross between Rag and Famish and Royal Oak Four Pines. Of course, Rag and Famish is a right away here. Let's see who crosses. This is for third position. Royal Oak, I think, crosses there, Cubby. Oh, yeah, so just. Royal Oak up into third position. It's and quite then... funny, all the pubs, where's where's the Burrowang Hotel? They're normally all side by side, the three pubs. Okay, and uh, noticeably out of the top end of the fleet at the moment is the Andu. Yeah, no, he's, he's got a discard coming up here. <laughs> Maybe saving himself for the second race, double points. The double points? Well, yeah, that's what you do, isn't it? Double point finale. <sighs> Probably no need, even need to start. Okay, a little bit of breeze down here at the bottom, Mark, too, so the boats will be happy with that. Yeah, so the lead, Tech 2, carved out one minute, a little a little more than one minute. That's a big statement. <clears throat> sure, and partners going around the bottom mark for, this, for the first time. And just let you on the uh, rag and the other one. Oh, nice bit of powerboat wash there. They'll yeah, be happy Pete, about Pete, that. Pete's powerboat reviews oh. from Noosa this week. Yeah, Pete, we'll just take record your powerboat rant. We'll just press play. I think Pete's probably out on a powerboat up in Noosa. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking a coldy. <laughs> Shepherds has been known to say something about powerboats. All right, here we go. Very uh, tight mark rounding here by the four boats on screen. So the rag got a bit lost there. Overstood. Not completely tidy on the draw. Oh, it's going to struggle here. There they go. Oh. oh. And it's a big pack, isn't it? Smeg's uh, got to get that spinnaker down before he can go around the mark. <laughs> yeah, plenty of brokes pressing their luck, and Ilvi's come through cleanly. How about that? And the breeze up and in the left cup. Yes, up and in. I agree with you, Bucko. Big problem there at the bottom of bottom right of the screen on the Smeg with the spinnaker now just coming down. So one, two, three, four, zero, five. So. And the only boat to go to the other mark is no sailing. Yeah, and that made some sense, actually, I thought. I think we're a bit of left in the breeze at the moment. Yeah. It's, it's not yeah. the worst thing you could do. So the gate probably is not quite as good as it could be, though, Jimmy, is it? The marks no. are, are too oblique. 
even Let's for an east. Twist it a little bit left. For an east nor'easter, exactly. Oh, well. Well. So Andu roughly in six there, a lot of work to do if they're not to get that as a discard from their fairly impeccable scorecard. Well, that so would far. be their discard yep. to date anyway, Bucko. Yep, and then, yep, yep. as we were saying before, the next race today is a double points yep. and cannot drop that race. Yep. So, yep. you know, I guess if you've got any nerves, get them out of the way in this race and we'll see what happens in the next. Jimmy Noakes Blue on screen having a little bit of trouble getting that spinnaker down. There's a big knot in that spinnaker, how you, from what we can see? Very big knot. <laughs> the, um, they have take-up systems on the floor and, you know, sometimes you get like a little O-boy over one of the pulleys and subsequently ties itself in a knot. But That's... trying to drop the spinnaker to lure it, as you know, Cubby isn't the, uh, the way to do it. They're in quite a good position and they've just dropped about half a dozen boats there, so uh, that's a bit of bad luck for them after doing so well. Eighteen footers, going around there. 18 footers bar and restaurant, Pirate Life Lager is going around. So they've done a pretty reasonable job of that drop. They're trying to, uh, a lot of the boats are trying to drop to windward and jibe at the same time and pull hard on a win. It's a very slow outcome for an 18 foot skiff. Yeah, it's not, a, it's not your ideal outcome anyway, is it? No, no. It's not as if you can just drop it into a spinnaker chute like the 16s are doing. Um, the poor old foreign end's getting a workout. Dude, you guys would probably know better than me. Anyone ever try a spinnaker chute on an 18? And was it successful? Well, I guess it wasn't successful because we're not seeing it on one. No, Julian Bethway tried it. He did, didn't he? I was just thinking Julian. And, and the ship sank, Jimmy. <laughs> the ship sank? That would what be the summary it? of the experiment. What, what was that one? The Looney Tunes, was it? One was of it? those, yeah. One of his sort of B-14 type boats. Someone and did but, try but it, though. The problem being, Jimmy, also that, you know, the spinnaker luff on these boats is, let's say, the big shoot's 36 feet or 37 feet, roughly. So twice the length of the boat. And so you have to scrunch it up three times. Three so, times, yeah. So the tube has to get very fat and 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 and, yeah. the, and the friction just gets too great. It's either a tube that goes all the way on the back of the boat or a fat fat tube with a lot of friction, you know, so yeah. very tough. So Bucko, I've just noticed here we've got a little bit of a split in the leaders. We've got Tech Two chosen to go to the Bradley's head side of the course. And Shore and Partners, who is uh, in a very comfortable second position, has come over to Shark Island or the eastern side of the course. And uh, there seems to be a little bit of east, easterly lift at the moment. Well, I think Tech 2 is not too worried, and he's got enough lead that he's sailing fairly conservatively. He stayed in the strongest wind, I think. There is risk on this side, on the right hand side, of having less wind in this typical situation. There's a JBW with all the uh, ex-legends on theirs. There's a lot of uh, Australian championships on board that boat. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was all put together by John Stanley, steamer. Um, and the club, then Woody, finally catered for it all. So um, we'll get up close and have a look a bit later on. The steamer's been amazing. John Stanley, as you were alluding to... Uh, Pulling all the history together of all the 18 foot skiffs, which some of us, uh, geez, we've sailed through it, but not necessarily taken it all in. Yeah, no, it's um, some of the stuff like Edric's, where I occasionally frequent at Craig's Bar and Grill over there at Manly. Um, and yeah, some of the information that Steamer throws at me, I've absolutely gobsmacked with the, um, with yeah, with some of the some of the amazing information that. And the, the thing is, too, Cubby, the amount of people that source him out to donate stuff that they've had under the house or you know grand, their great great grandfathers passed away and the you know steamer gets given all these amazing trophies uh, and he goes and gets them restored and gives them a bit of life he's got the championship winning pennant in the clubhouse at the moment from the kismet which is my there's on the uh jbw sir robert and willie morrison <laughs> we'll, uh, We'll have a bit of a circle around them. We'll have a bit of a circle around them, um, I guess, at half time. What do you think? Half time. Yeah. Now we're travelling here with Royal Oak, who are making a pretty good fist of it in, in third, in the middle of the creek a bit, but, oh, and who knows, but. Um, 
Sean they, Partners just ahead of him there in the distance, crossing behind the Manly Fast Ferry. Yeah. So currently, uh, sure we've and still got Tech Two leading. Sure and Partners in second spot, and what looks to be Royal Oak, Four Pines in third. And considerable divergence of opinion about where to go, and Tech Two is protected the right, and they haven't stopped going through the water yet. So. Uh -huh. Uh, his pace looks good today. Yep. The Tech 2 is focused and they're going quick. Looks like there's better pressure here on the right, like on the eastern side. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be backing it, Jimmy, looking up at, to the hard right. It looks like it lifted right. off again, yeah? Yeah. Okay, we're just going around the JBW. And there's the JBW. So there's a boat owned by. The winning family, fabulous charter vessel. Gee, I've had the pleasure of driving it a few times, the JBW, yeah. named after John's father, Jock. Yeah, Jock and winning. The boat cup built by Perdrio. Ian Perdrio. That's correct. Mate, she's something like 80 tons. Man, it's Brownie waving at us. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Robert, hello. Heavy Will, on the Willie top Willie Morrison deck. beside him. We do a stability check. Maddie Coleman, <laughs> Will Morrison. She's good. She's good, yeah. There's some lumps of timber in there you wouldn't believe. I She's know, solid I know. wood. I know. Solid it's wood. Fantastic. Yep. Work All right. right. Tech two on screen. They're really giving us a sailing lesson today, Bucko, in this uh, tricky breeze. Yeah, I mean, it, it was amazing, wasn't it? The first beat full of snakes and ladders. Yep. And they just escaped on a puff down the run Sh to some degree. Sure, and partners just about to come across screen there. Yeah, so that That's gives your gap. viewers an idea. So Sure and Partners looks like to be in second position at this stage. So on the mighty Sure and Partners, Steve Thomas, Lindsay Stead, and as mentioned, Tom Quigley in the bow. And they've made a pretty good fist of it, both in terms of execution and tactically. They dug their way out of being about 5th or 6th or 7th. And they look Lindsay's like they're nice heading to the right cut. side of the course. In my, I'm liking the, yeah, the no, eastern side. And upwind of where they are now, there is pressure. There's Bucko wasn't liking this side, if you remember, two minutes ago. But but I, so. what, I, what I didn't like, Jimmy, was the bit further to the right, OK? We're not going there. No. <laughs> no. All right, there's a, there's a bit of separation now, so we'll have to see. They're just about to tack him. On the Shoreham yeah, Partners? they've gone as far as you're permitted to go on the right edge, Shoreham Partners. And they've got uh, a nice line to see themselves yeah. out of that tack. But you see them out of the tack, they're just not quite, just getting the three strings as the apparent wind develops and the flow gets fully attached. And just above Royal Oak, four nice, points there. Nice, boys. Yep, lovely and fabulous. The things Dylan does for Bucko, there you go. Fabulous picture, fabulous. Start charging you. Yeah. Five dollars in the tin for that one. Five dollars. Right, and fifty. Fifty from the boat. Five. Right. For, five for Dylan. I think you'll want it the other way. Yeah, there you go. Back on so, the Royal Oak. So that, they're fresh off a race win from last weekend. Yeah, they are. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, Royal Oak Four Pines. You know, yeah. they've got a very capable crew there uh, <laughs> with Aaron. John Cooley and Charlie Gundy on the Royal Oak Four Pines. And there's Tech Two in the background, so that's uh, the gauge from Royal Oak up to Tech Two. Decent enough, but you know, the, the Royal Oak would be happy to hang on to that spot, I would suggest. Just got a bit of dirt here off the ferry. That will, will not be helping them, but they've, did, they've figured out they have to get east. I think that's their, they've rolled the dice and they have to stick with that this time, I think. Jesus. Sean Partner's taking the oddest to it, a bit further up the track, but anyway. There's he, the Andu on the screen. He goes the Andu stepping into the puff now. And you'll see Tech 2 coming from the right of screen in a second. In the far distance. There. Very much in the far distance now. They, Jack and his crew be very happy to be uh, where they are. They've, um, 
Copy. can relax just for a second. And do tacking right in front of us here. Yeah, they, they don't look too comfortable, do they? Cup, for no, whatever reason. So we have a meat pie or sausage roll for lunch or big fella take you off him? There was a big team talk in the park when I was uh, down there before the race. So, Tech 2, is, sorry, Sure Pun has given back a fair bit. The left has paid here. Yep. Elby's now in third. Sure Pun is fourth and Smeek fifth. Royal Oak Four Pines seems to have closed that gap a little bit, Bucko, didn't he? Yeah, they have. Yeah, they have. A little bit tricky for Tech 2. Always hard to lead. No, you've got to make the right calls, Cup. Well, it's all right if you make the right calls, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's hard to defend it from in front. No, when it's like this, it's a tough job. And it's not just covering. You're covering these boats, you usually lose the race. Yeah. I think to a certain extent, you, if you're confident with your boat speed, you just got to sail your own race. Yeah, and, and, and at, at the most, loose cover. Loose cover. Loose cover. Loose yeah. cover. Yeah. So we're travelling with Tech 2, standing into Nielsen Park on port, not too far away from the starboard tack lay line. Got a little, little tack on the Tech 2, and a little bit of breeze coming down towards him here. Might even see a little bit of lift for the Tech 2. Yep. Maybe this is, uh, maybe he's on a lay for the top mark. No, he's not. Cup, you know that, he didn't get past the blinker. Well, Bucko. <laughs> It doesn't matter. He's got a comfortable... He's only got 40 seconds up his sleeve. But the Royal Oak has zoomed in a second. It's the Royal Oak almost on the same line as Tech 2 just behind them. So I think uh, what we've got here is Tech 2 leading, obviously, on screen there. But uh, just behind him, uh, Royal Oak four points in second. And potentially, he'll be uh, in third position in the middle end. Elva is in third currently, I believe, Cap. <clears throat> and Royal Oak, I think, has gained dramatically up this this work. Yep. There's Smeg and Rag and Famish in behind them. Probably the biggest loser on this leg. Is, Other than Shore and Partners. Shore and Partners is uh, <laughs> Rag and Famish. Who went right Famish. over to the Western Shore. Yep. Now, Bucko, to be fair to say, if Tech 2 makes this mark, you owe me a beer. He's on a bit of a lay to the top. Oh, he's lay. We should never. I should never bet against Tech Two, should I? <laughs> or you, Cup, perhaps. <laughs> All right, Tech Two, just about to round the top mark. Just just a run to the finish. Just a little squeeze to get there, but good uh, enough. It's squeezing good. Enough. good. <laughs> it ain't, but anyway, it doesn't uh, matter. Well, they can hit the mark if they want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you, hit, you can hit the mark, but you can't drag the mark. There you go. Nice uh, set-ish on the Tech uh, 2, but it's up and they're away. A cup, good enough, mate. Good enough. Yeah. For government probably, work. probably one of their worst ones, and we're still saying it's good enough. Yeah. Well and truly. <laughs> so that's, yeah, and straight into the jibe. So. Yeah, well, they were starting to sail away from there. Yeah. Fit the shortest distance of the next mark. Royal Oak four, four points. points. Two crew in off the wing there. That's so a little, a little unfortunate. Lull. A little lull. Still going to get him second spot. Yeah, no, and they'd be pretty pleased with that, and rightly so. 100%. Left a few names in the dust. All right, let's see who's going to pick up the scraps here, Bucko. Um, well, Smeg might be third if Ilby's not, okay? so Smeg's uh, done Cap okay. Just in front of us there. It's going to be very close. If he's not third, he'll be fourth at the top mark. Yeah. Yeah, no, Elvie's going to be second, uh, third, sorry, I would expect. So great work from from John O'Whitty on the Ilve. I oh, know it's mixed in front of him just. So. Well, we'll just see how he goes Watch coming out space, of the you reckon? Yeah, yeah. no, Ilve's got a bit of boat speed, maybe just the sprung. I think oh, you're right, right Bucko. Smeg might be on the short lay, I think. No, he's sprung, so he's there. This is as close as you want to be. In fact, you don't want to be overlapped, really, do you? So. No, it's 
no advantage. He's better off trying to jive behind him. Yeah. Take the whole crew off the wing with the spinning as well. I think that's Ooh. what Jono was trying to do there on the Orby, is slow it. Yep. 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 Little oh, jive inside. Okay. Absolute nice. right move. Nice. And windward, windward set, though. And leaving him with the windward set. But it's just there. He, he might have captured him if he can sheet on. If he Come did. on, Johnny. Pull it on. Come on, Johnny. Yep. Got him. How about that? Coco, oh, Coco and wouldn't be too pleased with that. Anyway. Sure, and partners just out of picture at the moment, rounding in fourth position. There we go, Sean and Partners. So a little fall from Grace from them, so they got stuck in no wind for a oh. while. Wrong side of the harbour, I think. Just yeah. uh, the western side didn't pay off. Well, the middle sort of did, it seems. Yeah, I, don't know. I agree. Don't know. Straight. We've got Andu and R Rag and Famish. Well, we might get the uh, little horses on and get down and get Catch this a, finish. Capture the finish. And in the distance, we just see a speck of red. And that's Tech 2 on his way to a heat win. Heat 6 of the Australian 100th Australian Championships. The Lynn Hefnan heat. So all of, all of the heats are all named after past champions that are no longer with us. So, um, you know, again, Steamer went to great lengths to uh, make everyone aware of it and make everyone aware that it's the 100th year of the Australian title. So, it's good. It's, um, you know, 100 years of sailing these boats for an Australian championship is something else. You'll be on screen doing an excellent job in third position. He's not getting any favours from the start, Johnny Whitty. <laughs> All right, take two. That's still a pretty good lead, Cup. Oh, he'd be happy with that. Well, look, I think he's extended since the top mark as well. Um, he's, good. he's doing some better angles down here. He's running a bit lower. And... Uh, Put the commentators curse. They're a polished team, the Tech Two. I, I, one of my only criticisms of them uh, this season is I, I would have liked to have seen them carry their number two or well, their big rig in a bit more pressure. They've been a bit, how would you say, uh, Gun shot. conservative this year. Well, they're a very good crew. They can handle the big gear. Yeah, yeah. But they haven't pushed it. Cub, I think they've been just accepting of the fact that if the whole park goes the smaller rig, that they can't be out of step. Because, no, true. Because you could end up 16th instead of whatever. And um, I think with any of the crews, though, they check two if they wanted to, could go up range a lot better than some of the other oh, ones. The, yeah. That does seem to have been the case indeed, and they're pretty confident about their ability to adapt and what the ranges are as well. A great shot from the drone. Just top, going. top down shot, you can just see just how flat and twisted the head of the chute is. And is nice it? entry radius down low and at the half height makes it completely manageable. Probably not too far off a giant cup, you're thinking. Yeah, well, I think they're, if they're looking out of the boat, which they are, ahead of them, the breeze has lightened up a little. Uh, certainly, if they look behind them, there's a gust. It wouldn't hurt them to jive back. A lot of their competitions back out to the east. Yeah. Sort of a no-brainer. I don't think there is any competition at this present time, actually. But anyway. Yeah, they're starting to get bent up by the shape of the breeze bending around the headland of Bradley's now, so... So they're all just starting to pull their trapeze wires up a little yep. bit, getting ready. Eight sheet hands gone into the middle. Into jibe. So if you see that in the jibe, the forehand hand just runs hard all the way. The main sheet guy gets a shoot around the luff of the jib, and it seems like a magic at 
it all comes together. Okay. It's nice and flat. Here we are coming to the finish with the Harbour Bridge and the city in the background. He's got uh, just a little bit of recreational traffic ahead of him, but that yacht's clear. He's got a pretty clear run to that finish line. Get this one. Breeze just filling in a little bit from behind her, so uh, he's going to have enough breeze to get him across the finish line. A little bit of funnel in the nor'easter again. Now you've got one more jive. Little funnel. That little chunk of iron just in front of him, the naval boy there. I think Jack's eyes are good enough for that cup. <laughs> nice long line. Uh, so they're only five, ten seconds away from a jive, which will take them to the finish line. Nice long line. Having a good look around, starting to think about it. Just through the powerboat wash and then stand by. So this is going to end up being quite a large win in the long run, Bucko. This, uh, Here we go. This is going to be two or three minutes. Yeah, going to be more than two. Jibe successful. Beautiful. All right, now, hot angle in. They could be looking forward to the next race, the they, double points. They could have jived earlier. <laughs> Coming in hot, Bucket. What a great shot. Harbour Bridge in the background. And they're going to hear the sound signal, hopefully. That's still broken. Uh, it's working. <laughs> Tech two, number one. So it'll put Tech two on 13 points moving forward. So way back in the distance, way back in the distance, uh, Royal Oak Four Pines looks like they're still holding second spot down. And uh, maybe just Meg now up into uh, third spot. Oh, no, and he'll be, on, he'll be coming in on port. Well, I think they're, they're oh, on Yeah, the... no. Oh. I, I think you're right. I think Smeg's got third yes, out of this. Smeg. Royal Oak on screen. Four. No, I think they've got the pressure. I think Smeg are going to be uh, just a little bit lucky. Well, I would have thought that Bradley's head would have paid, but... They'll uh, be in the background. No warranty on that <laughs> statement either. <laughs> it's going to... But it's as hard as it is for the uh, skiffs and the crews trying to work out where to go. Hard for the commentators. Line, uh, the red pipe. What about our uh, friends Andrew? Where are they? They look okay. Just over to the um, to the left of that screen. Smeager comfortable third. Sean yeah. partners in fourth as we see it. So I'll leave Smeg on 14 points going into the final. Sean and partners still has one jive before they can lay the finish line. Smeg's going to sail straight through. It's a long finish line. So yeah, no, and I think a good job from the committee just to use the, the start line. Yep. So. Extra beers went on the ripples side today, Bucko, so they. <laughs> Royal Oak, four pints second. Special guest. Smeg's drive to run to the finish. So two minutes ten probably cover in the order, two fifteen. Uh, yep, there we go. Smeg cross the line in third. Looks like uh, Shore, Shore and partners, partners on screen now is going to get fourth. Coming with a bit of a, a last ditch effort, the Andu looks like he's going to grab fifth. Which, nice, work. nice work, but which will be his drop moving into this final super race shortly, Cub. Yep. So, uh, excellent effort from the Ilve. Just looking a little unfriendly going across the finish line, but uh, John O'Whitty's team, very happy Six. with that race. Well done.
John O and team. Now we've got a bit of a gap between um, sixth and seventh. I think the rag. One of, yeah, one of your picks, it. I think, might be next. Cubby being the, the rag and famish. That's Not a great pick today. <laughs> no, well, it was up that second work. They just they went left when the breeze was right. They got to the right. The breeze went left. You know, it's just you, we've all been there. Can we blame their coach? I blame Larry. <laughs> yeah, the super coach. Super, super coach, coach Larry <laughs> was on the wrong side of the course. Yeah, yeah. He'll be um, hiding behind the sunglasses. Good stuff. So Finport also come to the party to some degree, haven't they? Because they were further back than fullback at one point. Yeah, um, I was a bit surprised. They were doing very well out of the start. They got to the east first. I liked that position. They were uh, they were strong there. They just don't seem to have the horsepower in the lighter stuff. Oh, no, they're set up a bit too flat still, I think. you know. And crossing behind them in the distance too, John Winning. He sailed better in this big rig um, configuration. I think it's time for him to have a bit of a rig tune-up. He was lightening at the beginning of the year. And yes. Just slowly but surely going a bit Ad further backwards so you know Absolutely. that tender means means a uh, a rig tune and a, know, uh, just no. with uh, rag and famish we've, we've got no sailing coming in on port on port <laughs> just coming out in of, hot just out, out of, of picture shot. just out. here we go rag and famish are having the right of way but Noakes will jibe, surely, or not. No, they'll cross no, them. Cross them. Cross them. So the, Noakes is on the favour jibe. So Noakes is going to get sixth, seventh, sorry. Rags still quite high. He's going to need to jibe. Yep. Rags jibing now. Noakes across. Finport just behind Rag and Famish has jibed to head for the line as well. And Finport ninth. And followed then thereby, as they say in the racing trade, Yandu. Yandu, yeah, John Lee. So be a call for a steward's inquiry. Tech two bolted. No, it was a good it was a good race by them today. Yep. Exactly what they needed. Yeah. They were um, yep. you know, sitting in fourth spot going into uh, the championship today the only way up third sorry third spot today and um they needed the win and they've done it good that's effort. all that's all they can do that's all they can do is just Come keep going for the win yeah um yeah. and hope all the other cards all fall into place um you know they i think the first little pack in the 18s at the moment cubby is too hot to try and sail someone back and try and leap out and today's too fluky as well on the harbour to even attempt it I think. Yeah. Alright, I've got a couple more boats coming towards the finish now. Lazarus and the Burrowang Capital Hotel. Partners. I think Lazarus is going to need to do another job for him to get across the finish line. And it's we've got Burrowing uh, young Henry's here, I just out of picture. Here they are. I think they're close to the line. I think they're going to beat yeah. the Lazarus. Yeah, yeah. That is, that is and correct. Correct. appliances online might even get Lazarus here that are just off screen to the right of screen. Yeah, just about to come into picture now is appliances online. Uh, Lazarus just going to beat them, I think. It's going to be very they're close. Driving the Lazarus. Oh, no. Yes, no. Oh. No, who would you give that one appliances to? Appliances, just. I think so. Yeah. AOL, yep. Lazarus. That's the closest finish we've seen this afternoon so far. And then the, tra the trailing peloton all bunched together. Was just about that. I've always wanted to say that, the peloton. The peloton. peloton. Here we go. We'll get you on a plane over to, uh, over to France, Cubby. Yeah. You can tour the Tour de France. I don't think you, that's got, gonna you, you got your tongue around all the pronunciations of all the old castles and too much lycra. No. Too much lycra. <laughs> Chateau and Champagne, yeah, just roll off his tongue, don't they? Chardonnay. Beer in the man cave rolls off the tongue the best. <laughs> so Noakes is going to get 14th. Oh, all right. We last saw them having troubles with their spinnaker. Seems okay now. And Fisher and Pikeville perhaps next. He looks close, Fisher and Pikeville. You've got uh, 
Birkin Head Point Marina's in there, 18 footers bar and grill, Balmain Slake, and the Kitchen Maker are all very close here. So, cover your Fisher and Pikel. That's blue, Fisher and Pikel. 18 footer bar and restaurant. He looks like he's going to be next to me. They've got a bit of. Oh, Pedro, Balmain, Balmain Slate just Slate struggling. Kitchen yep. maker. All right. Pull that on. Head just crossing the line, followed by the Kitchen Maker and Balmain Slate just crossing as we speak. Is that our fleet finished? That's it. Oh, no, 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 there's one more. Where? One more? Up there somewhere there was one more. He must be swimming. Well, you got Snake Sheath is ashore. Yep. With a broken spreader, so they're not sailing. So we should have 19, 20, 20 boats, shouldn't we? We should have 20, yeah. Missing and there was a spinnaker up there a minute ago and it's disappeared, so. Have you been for... seeing these things long, Bucko? Actually, just looking up the course at the moment, it's probably the breeze is the best it's been all afternoon. Yeah, the funnel's re exerted itself to yeah. some degree. And don't forget, viewers, if you're liking what you're seeing, Feel free to hit the like button, jump on, leave a comment. We'll endeavour to do our best to get the simple answer out of people, particularly Bucko. Process of elimination, Jimmy. Lazarus Capital Developments. Well done, son. Process of elimination. That's, that. right. That's what you get the big bucks for, mate. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, beat that, shipper. Yeah, Chippo, if you're watching, you better hit the like button. <laughs> Just put the beer down. First. Put the beer down first. Yeah. He'd be on the margaritas up there, wouldn't he? And the Nusa? No, Peter's a very um, abstemious fellow. Most of the time. All right, so what do we got? We got one more heat. One more heat. Double points, no drop in this last heat. So okay. what have you got for... Uh, the We've got Chits just chipping away behind us, trying to work out the new totals. Well, I'll get the abacus out and we'll see how we go. Well, <coughs> what have you got? Give us a look here. Andu will be on eight. Tech two will be on thirteen. Smeg, Smeg on fourteen. Yep. <coughs> Rag on twenty two. No sailing on 29, so... Let me just write that down, Chips. Really what's happened is um, the boats have just consolidated a little bit. And do still a reasonable lead at this stage. Yeah, but the double points, no drop, is a huge, huge thing to play for, right? So something's going to have to go incredibly wrong for Andu. Stranger on. things have happened, well, haven't they? Well, nothing... Only slightly more wrong than just went on cut, so... True. You know. Sometimes you just got to, you know, shake that first race off your shoulder. Look at this, the lovely uh, JBW in front. So this is where the winner of the Australian champion will be coming alongside. I assume they'll have a rubber duck in between it and a JBW. Stakey wouldn't allow it. But uh, there's Willie Morrison in the white. White. <laughs> The legend himself. I'm just wondering if uh, Tommy Nugent in the background, part of the Holmes clan, if large contingent for the Holmeses are on board. Is that who's standing beside Willie? Bloody blind as. Dave Slennon. Dave Slennon on the top. Who's on the roof? Oh, Maddie Coleman, Dave Slennon. I'm going to say we'll investigate the stability curve later. So, Matty Coleman. Steamer. John Stanley. Johnny Stanley. Yeah, yeah. The Admiral, Don Buckley. Look at him. All the legends. There you go. No, no bullshit being told up there. <laughs> Say that. Uh, we can do what we want. And on the back. So, uh, Rob Brown up there. What is that long hair? Yeah, long hair's down here. I know. I know. Long hair was down here. Oh, Bobby Joy. On oh, the back deck no, Joy Boy, surely not. Yes, he is. He is. He is. He is. Wow. Well, Steamer did well to drag him out of home. And um, is that Andrew Hay up the bow, Noddy? 
I think it is. Is, is yeah, that who Noddy, it is yeah. beside... Noddy Hayes there, yep. Oh, beside Willie? Yeah. So... In the black shirt. Is dark, it? dark shirt. Yep. I suppose once you start with Woody, you're entitled to go on the JBW. No, I think there's a bit of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For the viewers, um, Willie there Morris and... Willie's Willie on Morris the phone and... probably to Wendy. Wendy's saying you're on the TV. Smile, put the beer down. <laughs> yeah. Well, but so. long-time mate, you have for Dave Porter. In on the, the KV. On the KV. Yep, yep. Long-running sponsor there he back is in on the, the day. on the dog and bone. All right, then, folks. All right. <laughs> They're doing very well at hiding their beers on there, aren't they? No, have a good day, guys. You legends of uh, the sport. And we've got one on board here, Cubby. <laughs> or two. My little mate, Bucko. Seven, we believe, or was Seven. were we inflating it to eight? I doubled it. So, Jimmy... Uh, doubled it. There you go. There's the two legends I'm, right there. I'm just fiddling with the paper, boys. Nothing new. Just while we're talking legends, I'd like to make a little bit of a shout-out to one of our good mates, Andrew Dolly Davola. Yeah. Struggling a little at the moment with his health. I know he'll be watching. Probably Zanny as well. Yep. So, uh, Doll, get better soon. Yeah, that comes from all of us, mate. Indeed. Hey, so guys, the um, this race now, the next race named in honour of Bob Holmes, four times national champion, five times JJ winner. Lovely bloke, excellent yachtsman. They also did quite a lot of big keelboat sailing. A yep. fair bit of that on Jack Rookland's boats of various descriptions. He is an Admiral's Cup winner. Yeah, no, I had the pleasure of sailing with him on the Sid Fisher's boat in the 79 Admiral's Cup. How about that? But and it, his wife will be presenting the ribbon yeah. this afternoon, Di. Di will present the ribbon, his widow, and uh, we remember Bob very fondly and an absolute gentleman. I grew up um, in that era, Bucko, mm -hmm. when, when the bear was sailing and uh, there's plenty of battles between my father, Don Barnett, and um, yeah. Bobby Holmes. Yeah. In, in fact, I think the uh, Associated Motor Club, which the, the bear sailed, oh, yes. snuck one of those uh, JJ Giltland championships away from the Travel Lodge at one yeah. stage. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. There was rivalry, that was clear. It was clear, but yeah. geez, they'd have a drink afterwards. No, they did. They, they didn't mind a bit. You wouldn't want to get in the way of the bear's fish, though, would you? No, 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 no. You'd lose an arm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, look, great family, the Holmes family. Yeah. Um, boat builders. Yeah. And Holmesy, um, and I guess. Jimmy Huey Cook was prominent in his crew as well for a long time, a, yeah. a, a product of the Manly Skiff Club. But um, Holmesy was the last person to win a title in a four-hander. Is that and, right? And Lenny Heverton, who was the previous long-time winner kind of thing and in, in, in his honour, the previous race was named, was the guy that drove the introduction of three-handers. They weren't for everybody and it took a little while for the techniques to get evolved of how to sail a boat efficiently with three hands. And Holmes, he was perhaps never comfortable on the trapeze in a sense, you know, which was the absolute requirement for a three-hander. The skipper had to be a ballet dancer in some degree. Cub? And the, and the boats changed significantly back then as well. The, the four-handers were, were, were very much uh, reasonably heavy wooden boats. Yes, yeah. And when they went to the three-handed boats, uh, Bruce Farr was one of the prominent designers at the time, and they were lightweight plywood boats and um so yeah so if we can just trace this theme a bit cub you know benny lexon started the three-hander thing to some degree yes and the new zealand's don lidgard took up the challenge so he designed some pretty good boats and a boat that won the gildan called smirnoff that's right and they started jiving downwind pretty methodically whereas the four-hander guys used to pile our back and you know yeah sit, Look, sit down as it were it was the era of skiff sailing that got me interested, I suppose. Uh, I have the plans at home for a Bruce Farr design. Exactly. That one day I wouldn't mind uh, having a listing having and a putting, it, putting having it together. Probably don't have the, yeah. the skills, but... Um, you know a bloke who does, though. I've got someone. Yeah, yeah. I've got someone, exactly. Yeah. And um, so, Holmes's last win in the national title was 72-73. And every Nationals after that was won by a three-hander. Right. That was the end of the era. But I remember quite vividly uh, watching the Kiwis jive downwind in a northeast on Sydney Harbour, standing on Bradley's head and going, wow, look at that. The, um, I, I've, 
the picture that sticks in my mind is the Smirnoff in one of the strong nor'easters. Yes. He was going down alongside yes. Shark Island, just yes. completely out of control. There's spray coming off every bit of the boat. Oh, yeah. And uh, like that's, it was just awesome back yeah. in those days. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, subsequently the McDowell brothers went on to win the Gildan in Auckland. And, um, Travelodge New Zealand. Travelodge New Zealand, exactly, yep. with a methodical bit of assistance from Mr Farr and others. Yes. And I guess we should also mention There's that... five um, minutes just on its way. We should also mention that, you know, Mike Fletcher was also important to both Kenny Beeshall's boats and to Dave Porter's boats and to Holmesy. Yes. As as the guy helping the rig development, the sailmaker like helping the rig development. Um, and... Uh, in those times, of course, the sailmaker would supply more than one boat. All right, Bucko. So it looks like we're in sequence for our... Super, super race. The Super, super Sunday. Sunday. This is it. We're going to have to have a beer to uh, wrap our head around it. <laughs> Double, Double points. points. Oh, oh, no dropping oh. of the points in this race. So this could really <coughs> turn things on its head. I'm anxious on behalf of everybody, OK? So the pressure's on. The pressure's yeah. on, the sponsors are happy. The sailors, when it first was bought out, a few of them were like, uh, I don't like it, I don't like it. Bit of the feel going on in the park now is that they all like it. Not everyone likes change, Jimmy. So, um, ship, look, the one thing ship, that it's... Shippo has just messaged me. Yeah. Don't know where the like button is, but he, but he likes it. So, <laughs> thanks for tuning in, Shippo. <laughs> He's just making sure that he's still got a spot next week. That's what he's doing. Yeah. No, he's no away, he's away next week and back the following week. For those that, uh, that are following, we'll have um, Pat Langley from Vicobi will be joining us next week. Um, Pat filled in beginning of the season for someone who wasn't ready to get going. All right, so oh. less than four minutes to the start of the seventh and final race of the 100th. 18-foot so, Skiff Australian Championship. So, Cub, let's just look quickly. Uh, tide probably just a little bit more of a factor than it was in the first race. Yep. Water yeah. pretty smooth. Very smooth. M most of the spectator slash punter craft have gone home. Gone home. Not the spectators, but the... On anchor drinking on Chardonnay. Anchor, something like that, exactly. Just three minutes now. Um, and the committee's using the same line setting as they had before, same windward mark, etc. It's stayed reasonably steady, hasn't it, like, as a whole? Yeah, and it looks to me like the funnel's in operation pretty good. So I think, Cub, if it was me, I'd be thinking that the left edge will pay for the first part of the beat. So do you think anyone needs to uh, push it at the start, Bugger? No, or, no, no. no. Yeah. And has got a good lead. They just need to have a respectable Stay. race. Yep. they got, you know... Five points up their sleeve. And yeah, but with the double points, that can evaporate yeah. very quickly. Well, it's three places, isn't it, essentially? I guess to some degree, some degree the pressure's on Tech 2 to win the race. That's all they can do. He has to win. There's yeah. no doubt. Yeah. But he did a pretty good job the first time, didn't he? He's got some form on the board for today. Yeah. So he looks like he likes this sort of mid-range tricky stuff. And he is pretty quick downhill. I, I didn't think Andrew was going that well. Well, I think he picked some good angles downwind, Jack. Yeah, um, no, no, he did clear. For, uh, for your mate Craig Nichols, he wants to know the points again. Yep, Andrew 8, Tech 2, 13, Smek 14, Noakes 29, uh, sorry, Lazarus 28, Noakes 29, and Yandu 38. That's as far as I went. 28. Right, less than two minutes to go to the start of the last race. Looks like we've got Finport down the pin end of the start line looking for something special. Which they need. <laughs> Which they do need. Just coming towards one minute. Breeze about in the puff here now, perhaps as strong as it's been, about... It's the one minute now. 10, 11, 12 knots. Finport on port. Noakes, Smeg towards the lured end. There's a big bunch up here at the start, boat end of the uh, course. Here we go. All right, Rag's in a nice spot, right in the middle of the line there. 
Sorry, folks. Rag and Femmes, 22 points. Correction. So they're fourth as we speak. Right. Right, co. Shaw and Partners and Elvie at the top. Most of the favourites in the middle. Big port hander coming here from the fin And port. they're looking a bit early, Cub. Tech two up this end. Early, boys, early, early. Tech two's gone. Recall. Oh, that's, that's looking like a general recall to me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tech two, extremely lucky there. Cubby where they are on the line would have been next well, to impossible to get back. <laughs> once you're that far over, you just got to try and drag everyone with you, don't you? Yeah. Like uh, and try and force the general recall. Oh, well. We've got our, got our little budding student on board, Cooper, who's uh, doing some, some video. What was his handle, Chits? He's BMX Coops. BMX, BMX Cooper. So on YouTube, so check him out. Yeah. That's the eye flag. Yep. Being displayed on the back of the uh, the committee boat. Beautiful ripple side. That's now heading into dangerous territory, isn't it? Going around the spectator ferry. There's a spectator ferry. Nice full house. Um, Lara Quigley's 21st birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Lara. She's up there on the the right of the wheelhouse. The Rosman fleet of ferries owned uh, by Sean Langman. For the Noakes, Noakes Group. Noakes Group. Yep. He's an amazing ambassador for the Wooden Ferry, Sean, and uh, keeps him in very good condition. Was it the Royale that he did up at the biennial paint scheme, or was... That was the Proclaim, I think. The Proclaim, yep. Cubby knows all the ferries on Sydney Harbour personally by name. Well, I think he's worked on most of them, haven't you, Cubby? <laughs> Not really, I just know. But in the... You see them on the harbour a lot, and uh, you know, their names just stick. Yeah, no, got it. Copy. Everyday use. So here's the lineup, folks. There's a, the camera cat sitting pretty. Assisting the committee, we are, Jimmy. Assisting. Assisting. No, not really. Getting herded in. Signals coming in three, two, one. Yep. And the red flag's a bit slow to come, a bit of friction. Getting the flags out of the... It's a little hollow mast and the flags live inside as you drop them. It's pretty clever. Anyway, here we go again. 0, 4, 5 at 1.3 is the course and bearing. Two laps. Two laps, 6 over 2. So it's actually quite a good... You know, the beat's long enough that the fleet can get sorted out. The flood tide just adding a little bit of time and distance effectively and... Uh, the run seems to be over pretty quick, though, doesn't it, Cub? What are you seeing there, Buck? About eight knots? No, ten. Ten? Ten. ten. Okay. Ooh, double yep. figures. Double figures, exactly. Double points, double figures. Double yep. figures, double points. That'll do, that'll do. Yeah. So just a, you know... It's not a, it's not a sea breeze nor east, though. No. It still will have holes in it, but less holes now, this beat we would expect. Four yeah. minutes. Four, Four minutes. minutes with an eye flag. So, anyone that's not sure the eye flag, if you're over in the last, over the line with inside the last minute, around the ends you go. And don't forget that this race is double points and cannot be dropped. It's uh, it's going to be pretty nail biting to see. I think last week we saw one of the races uh, start with an eye flag, and I think I saw the smeg over and go around the end actually created an advantage for him not sure that's the way to go yeah, really. last week there was so that many early. strange things happened with yeah. breezes you name it cubby it was uh, yeah. a hard one to pick and doug was real mindful because on the old camera cap we just used to run off one battery yep and that limited our production time on here we're charging yeah we're, we're charging as we're going as you can see we're running on 100 percent of batteries yeah um, we, we're cooking. We're, so, you know, Cubby, we had a couple of black flags. Three minutes. Black flag races as well. Ooh. If you notice that. I've well, been on the end of a black flag. It's um, the wrong end of a black flag. Wrong end of a black black flag. The, the rough end of the pineapple. <laughs> where, where, who are you with then? We were in on pineapple the Xerox country. Oh, we yeah, up there. in Queensland. Yeah. Naughty yeah. boys. <laughs> and it was a Xerox, unfortunately. Naughty, naughty, yeah, naughty. Yeah, yeah. The young boy clearly didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we was robbed. A familiar theme. We was yeah, robbed. Anyway. Nah, look. 
It's not the... You don't want to go there if you can avoid it. Absolutely. So. It gets pretty tense on board the boats. Like, you know, we're, it's like we are racing for sheep stations sometimes. Yeah, I think you've got to get out of that idea out of your head, Cub. I think you just got to go, we'll just execute as well as we can. Yes. Just getting off the line without an incident, you know, was... Okay, so less than three minutes to go? Just, yep. No, just three now. Uh, two now, yeah. Two. 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 And, and so, looking at them racking up. Smeg towards the pin with Noakes. Looks like Finport may have given up on the port hand start. Yeah, and Tech 2 coming all the way to the weather end. That's not insignificant because he doesn't usually start at the weather end in this wind direction. Smeg looks quite advanced, although he's just tacked at the furthest end of the line and moving his way back towards... Yeah, the, the, the fleet thinks that the wind at end is, is... There is some wind end bias. So they're all a bit racked up in the top half of the line. Ooh. Sure, and partners are in the tide just to the left of screen. All right, Smig's in no man's land there at the moment. Oh, he's, he's run out of space. Oh, he's okay. One minute. Sure, and partners will get back up and rejoin the fray, presumably. Tech two just taking another step up. Yeah. Tech 2 is going to have a little screen. fight with Ilvi for the boat, I think. And there's space there for him to do that as well. And Andu and do, is right there with Tech 2. Yep. So I think that might be what's happening, eh? We're gone. An old fashioned match race. We don't want to see this finish in the protest room. No. No, I don't think the blokes do either. Sort it out in the car park. Sort it out in the car park. Here we go, a couple of boats. They're, they're early. They're <laughs> very early. <sighs> Ilvi will be over. Tech 2 can stop, but there's a bit of near knife fighting going on there. Knife fighting? Knife. Yeah. Okay, there's a, there's a few pulled hard on there. Yep. Yeah. I think we stay right here. Lazarus is over. Oh, that didn't look too bad from where I'm sitting. Oh. It's just wow. that one person further to the left. Clear start, Bucko. Okay. Clear start. They're all right. <laughs> Clear start. I think I think we need a subscription to OPSM or something. <laughs> this is Tech Two. Somehow got out of there clean and in the lead. How about that? Yeah. No, he was. Um, he managed to stall the boat just enough. Yeah. He was pretty close to Andu in the middle of the line there, and then just. A, He's able to sort of stall the boat, sit it there for a second, and just at the right time, yeah. sheet on and take off. So, yeah, great start from the Tech 2. As we know, they need to lead, lead to win this double point race. Anyone else standing out? Okay, we... Well, only the guys that were in row B, C, D. Yeah, row F. Smeg just tacked off. There, yeah. behind Birkenhead Point Marina. So we're seeing a pretty similar first leg for most of these boats. Straight off the start line on starboard tack, heading towards the Bradley's Head side of the course in reasonable breeze, 10 knots. Yeah. To Noakes Blue, Noakes Sailing, all bailing out with Royal Oak Four Points. Now, let's just see what happens here. Tech 2 will press and do right, in, right into the corner and do tacking. Nice. Just Great off tech. screen, Barrowang tacked into the no breeze over here and capsized. So, Tech 2 and Andu at it. Tech 2 paying Early. Andu full respect. The beautiful covering tack by the Tech 2. He's, he's made Andu uh, take the low road. Just on screen at the moment, Finport in in good shape as long as he holds into that building breeze. We've got better speed than him.
But and once again, Bucko, uh, Rag and Famish come out of that start pretty well. Yeah. He's liking the extra bit of pressure we got here at the moment. Maybe yeah. 12 knots. Yeah, so it's possible, Cub, that uh, we haven't seen Andu in this mildly up range. What would you say? At least mid range, you know, yeah. for the big rig. And Tech 2 looks a little sharper than he was in the first race, in fact. He's got a mission, hasn't he, Jack? He's just yeah. He's, he's yeah. got Andu in his sights at this stage. And they, the, the, the three leaders, Rag and Famish, Tech 2 and Andu, have just gapped everybody else. Yeah. They put, except for perhaps Fitport, they put 20 seconds into them in the first two minutes of sailing. So it's it's interesting at the moment if you you see uh, Rag, Tech Two, and Endu on screen to your left, but Finport seems to be sailing a couple of degrees closer to the wind. And uh, if they had to cross now, there's every chance Finport would lead this race. Yeah, but I I think Tech Two's in the low fast mode to keep pressing Andu out to the right because there's no there's a limit to how far you can you can sail there. We're isn't gonna it? run out of room at some yeah. stage. Yeah. Find a bit of Australia. So Yeah, so Finport doing a great job at the moment. Yeah. And well he likes the up range too. Doesn't yep. like the down range, he likes the up range. As we've noted. <laughs> I shot a Finport there on screen. Keegan to be happy with that. I, I was watching, uh, was it last, one of last weekend's races, he, uh, he was the early leader. So he's, he can do it. He tells me there's a new boat uh, potentially on the way for him next year. So he's looking forward to that already. Andrew's come back in the back of screen there and Tech Two's kept going. Cubby, what's your thoughts? Well, Rag, Rag's probably in a good position there at the moment. Rag yeah. and Famish. Rag, Rag just tacking. There's um, a so, thin port clear leader at this present moment. And Tech 2 just having to, wanting, I think, just to keep his air clean, Cub, though. So yeah, Tech no, 2 now tacking. Tech our main Slake seems to have tack. tacked on top of Andu, so uh, that's going to create a little bit of problem for Andu. Yeah. But a comfortable lead at the moment to the Finport. Yep, he's across by about 10 boat lengths. So the other guys burned a bit of time, you know, fighting with each other. So. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what Andu can't afford, though. He can't afford to get into the dogfight. He needs to uh, yeah. step out. Yeah. Well, he's just got to be within a couple of places of Tech 2. So. Just blank it out and go for it, really. Is. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> just looking at Ilve and Nakes not on the screen, but they've, they've, they've tussled hard for it. Bradley's head, look, Jono just tacked hard on Bradley's and coming back and be close. I'm just trying to get around the back of these guys. And... Then we've got uh, Finport tacking in the lead there. Uh, Keegan York, Bryce Edwards and Phil Marshall doing a great job in Heat 7. Snagger right back in it, just crossing here behind Tech 2. And yeah, Andrew probably fourth. But I think Cub that um, Tech Two in this wind speed will be confident enough that they are probably about 20, 30 seconds better on the run than everybody else, more or less. Yeah, I know. They look, they've been sailing really well. They like sailing the boat with pressure. Yeah. Shot there, Tech Two, Andu, Balmain, Slake, and Nake sailing in the furthest away from screen. Just off the reef there at Bradley's in the background. Yeah, not too much wind in the middle of the bay there for a bit, and then as you get onto the western edge, there's more pressure again. Oh, Rag and Famish just tacked. The Smeg on screen. I was talking to Trevor Barnabas during the the weekend, uh, they've been doing a lot of work on the SMIG rigs with uh, Robert Atkins. 
Michael Coxon got a lot of input on that boat. Tech 2's tech. Bad tech. And Tech 2 didn't like what they saw. The other guys coming around their bow to some degree. So here's a key thing here now. Smeg's a measuring stick. He was just behind Tech 2. And I think he's come out of the right edge here in front. Easily too, Cup. Well, I think it was Finport probably still leaving just, but uh, Smeg's got that right hand shift that he w went looking for. Well, look at the change. Um, Smeg, Smeg's about five boat lengths across tick two. We, we saw that in the first work of that last race too. You know, you can be looking great and then all of a sudden, yeah, just fall off that cliff. A little bit less wind here for the Smeg at the moment. So Michael Coxon, Ricky Bridge and young Zach Barnabas in the Smeg. Yeah, so... They look all right, don't they? They're, yeah, they're, no, yep, no. they're comfortable there. A little bit of power boat wash. So in the distance we can see Finport, who we believe is the race leader at this stage, but Smeg... Smeg looks a little bit higher up here in the right. They just keep playing this right shift. As long as there's pressure there for them, right? Yep. Well. So, it's a great shot of the smeg there. I think maybe he's sneaking up into the lead bucket. Well, the other thing it suggests to me is that, is that Smeg's quite fast once they get solid three strings, yep? Yeah. Yeah, well, so it says Finport, yeah, like it is. This is a proper nice breeze for this rig, isn't it? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. solid three yeah. string, lay back. Just some bouncing power, through. Though, like, but, yeah, Finport still comfortably in the lead. Andu is just to the left of the Smeg, just there. There it is. So, Andu's fighting Maybe hard. Maybe Smeg's and just getting ready to attack. Yep. So they're going to come back. Okay. Yeah. I think they're on a downer there. Yeah. That's no, probably the right yep. decision. There's yep. logic, but yep. just depends how much funnel they got out of Watson's Bay, really, I think, okay. at, at the end of the beat. Andu there on screen. So he's, um, the way we see it, I think he's in about fourth position at the moment, yeah. if, if that. Yeah. There's so. a lot of guys snuck in behind us, Cubby, and went right over to Shark Island. So Andu's probably sailing in a little bit of flatter water over there, Bucko. It's uh, quite rough here in the middle of the course. No. Yeah. Temporary. So, sort of a fleet at large that thinks the right side's paying here. Uh, look at... It just seems like, uh, looking at the boats that have gone right, seem to have stepped up the ladder a little bit. And certainly pretty solid pressure here at Nielsen Park. We're travelling with Tech 2. The Andu going to cross them. There's a few puffs in the uh, yeah, yep. breeze over here, but yep. it's, it's not Good. straightforward. No, not at all. But yep. Cub, as you would know, historically, these guys here, Smeg Tech 2, on port, uh, into the strongest pressure at Nielsen Park here. And typically, this route does pay when the wind's east nor east. And that's now tw easily 12 knots with both the boats are, Tech 2 and Smeg. So now, w now well into the mid-range for the rig, for the big rig. Smeg having a bit of trouble to attack further up the bay. Great shot of the Tech 2 on screen. We're probably going to uh, follow the Tech 2 through his next tack, so let's just see how they go. But yeah, no, and he's in good, good shape geographically. Okay. Tacking in a little couple of waves there. Forward hand straight out on the trapeze, followed by the main sheet hand. And Jack's just balancing as he comes through. And there's a long way in front of him. <clears throat> and uh, Finport still leading the race, Bucko. Okay.
right, so this is getting interesting. We've got uh, Finn Paul would be our current race leader, followed by Anne Du in second. It's a little hard to pick, but there's some uh, good money on the hill day out there, as is in third spot. Yeah, the hill day looks like they're clearly third. Valmain yep. Slate also in the good part of the fleet. Okay. Finport might be on a lay to the top mark. Just Andu cracking sheets to come behind the Finport. And a little bit of not too much wind in here too, Cub. Just for the time being, they're just... Ilvey still coming in as a bolter from the left-hand side of the course. John O'Whitty having the day of his, day of his life, isn't he? Ilvey could even be in the lead here, Bucko. Top mark's just here. I just wonder if Andu has seen it. He's overstood. He's well overstood. He hasn't yeah. seen it or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and uh, Ilvey looks like the new race yeah. leader. <coughs> There'll be a bit of deck slapping on the Andu here at the moment. They've well and truly overlaid that top mark. And uh, Ilve and Balmain Slake have come in from the left-hand side of the course, and I think that's first and second. Quite strange. And Noakes is going to be third, I think. It could be. Race leader, Finport's dropped out. I was trying to work out where Andu was going then. I was like just trying to give him the courtesy of not throwing any wake at him. OK. So Ilve round in first, Balmain Slate oh, just a little bit under pressure in second. Too much bang off. <laughs> Followed by Noakes sailing Sean Langman's new boat. In third spot oh. and in fourth, Andu. Okay, it looks like in fifth we've got Finport, who was the early race leader, followed by Fisher and Pike, who also went out to the left-hand side. And the blokes all over stood reaching in for the Port Tech ley line because the committee shortened the beat. Yeah. Tech 2 still battling away up the right edge in about 10th. Ooh. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah. You watch Smeg go around the mark. An ouch too. Very ouch. Lazarus Capital just getting around in front of Lazarus Capital. <laughs> oh, and it's a bit close for a cap size. So they've obviously got a big shift on the left hand side, but a big, big shift, like yeah, no. 15 degrees. Yeah, the breeze turned left and Bill. Easy to call sitting on the camera, Cat. Well, we didn't call it. No. <laughs> no. So it's just that, wow. you know, reversion to funneling wind rather than the gradient. There's been a few peacocks to feather dusters in this work. One of the skiffs, one of the Lazarus skiffs going down there with no spinnaker. Maybe that was the reason we couldn't see them uh, at the end of the first race. That's the Lazarus Capital part, uh, Development? Yes. Yeah. Uh, a little way? I didn't have been in the time. <laughs> okay, our race leader is still ill though, followed by Balmain Slate, another rookie team in second. Young 29er kids cubby on that. Loving it, just having fun. Yep. And the guys from Balmain, Balmain Group and uh, Slate Racing, new sponsors to the club this year as well, Cabby, and they're, they're loving the uh, being part of the, the atmosphere for the 18s, which oh, is it's good. great. It's good to have new sponsors come on board. So they're getting what we used to say in the old days, mapped here. They're, uh, they're heading straight to the bottom mark as we're looking at them. Bit of boomerang effect. Yeah. Yeah. Not many passing lanes now with that course access unless they shift to where the yeah. mark. And they're under the... They're, oh, there's they're right. Three, they're, they're, three they're strings. Yeah. So in second place, Balmain Slake. Third, Noakes Sailing. And fourth, Andu, our current series leaders. 
if they can hang on to that place there, that'll be a, an eighth Australian Championship for Seve Jarman. Correct way. <clears throat> Just lightened off a little. Which yeah. probably suits Ilbay, like they're, they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're quite light crew, eh? So, uh, I don't know if we need to be happy with that. What they need to do nah, is give them... I don't think they're light cup. Johnny Walton's a one tonne of these days. Okay. Yeah. What I'd like to see them do is give themselves a little bit more time in their bottom arc if they're going to round it to port and sail out to the west. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, sure, I'm sure they would have thought about it. Something I hope. There's yeah. a race later that we're talking about just in front of the Andu on screen. Andu's going to have to jive out of here. They're waving at a fisherman. Yeah, so they've got to jive anyway. Yep. Yeah, look, if they've come down here at this angle, it's going to be light underneath Bradley's. Distinct, you... Distinctly. Yeah. Distinctly. And the gunner going to cross OK. And do first to stretch out to the uh, double bay side of the bottom mark. On the points table, Bucko, who's... Ilvay. Ilvay. Ilvay no. in the distance. All right, so that's that light patch we were talking about. There's a big wind shadow underneath Bradley's head. And it's worse than that. It's a horror show. Uh, Ilvay actually dropping the chute for some reason. And he's parked it. Man overboard is a bit <laughs> the reason. I can see a bloke swimming <laughs> behind the boat. Oh, yes, <laughs> quite oh, some distance. Ew, and, oh, no, they're going to capsize? No, they're not. They're just going to try and wait. The boat that was a big winner out of this, I think, Sandu, he's, he, he saw what was going on. He's jived and carried the breeze out from underneath Bradley's head. I think that's all right, our current race leader, Balmain Slate. Second position at the moment. There's still a there's still a crewman in the water on our starboard side. Yeah, not that easy to pick him up either. <sighs> right, well we're focusing on Balmain Slate, the race leader, and uh, Noakes. Sailing in second position. John, Johnny Walton just yelled out, broken trap. So they're coming back to get him. That's Johnny Walton that was in the tide. But... All right, so a bit of gear failure on the race leader, Ilve. Johnny was saying yesterday, someone's forever falling out of that boat. So All they right. need the trap line to add to it. But there you okay. go. So uh, <laughs> it's a big closing of first, second and third here. Andrew's in the... Bree's a bit squirrely down the bottom here. Very squirrely. Okay. Blake's running out of it and Blake's a bit too much. So, what I was going to ask you just before, Bucko, on the points, who is the closest rival to Andu that's down in this lead pack? you got Balmain Slate, Noakes. you got Smeg probably in fourth or fifth here as well. well Fisher Pikel and Finport. At the moment, all... Um, and it has to do is stay upright, basically. And do a little bit late on that spinnaker drop. That's nothing compared to some of the pressure drops I've been oh, doing. Oh, it's a slow jog, too, on the Balmain Slate. That's difficult. Yeah. And they're going to go in the tide. No, they're not. No spinnaker down and fairly clean coming around the mark, followed by Andu in third position. But... Noakes with nothing set for the beat. No cunning them on. But they're getting going. Still got a bloke in the boat, so I'm not sure what's happened there. No, and do just going bow down and just put the hammers on and going for it underneath them, right? Yep. And Smeg going to the uh, right hand mark coming downhill. And that might be the winner actually because there, there is no wind at the uh, at the other mark. The Balmain slope still tidying up. Tidying doesn't begin to describe it, no, Jimmy, does look, it? Well, there's, a, there's a bowman somewhere wrapped in a spinnaker over there. Yeah. Anyway, we're on to that on the run down. You need to allow some time to do a manoeuvre like that, and they clearly uh, just left it too late. Still, I'd still be in third if they get rolling soon. It's just a bit um, of an experience, isn't it? That's all it is. Yep. Yep. This yacht. Perfect line. 
very slow rounding by the Fisher of Pike Hall. It's almost like these guys all need to rerun their Howard retrieval system in the bottom of the boat. Like, everyone's having trouble with the drop. Like, Kids are going out it. to the left. Get rid of it and throw it out the back of the boat like the old days, right? In the old... That was the six mil pre stretch. In the old days, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, so the breeze is just uh, lottery here at the moment. Tricky stuff. Meg. Big fall from Grace there, I think, Bucko, yep. at, uh, at right-hand bottom gate mark. Yeah, it might have just taken him further away from the true wind. Yeah. Yeah, the wind is still funneling down the middle. There's Tech 2 still struggling. Struggling. He'd be, uh, he'd be lucky to be in the top 10, Jimmy. He's tech yeah. 2. Yep. There's Tech 2 uh, just working his way to the bottom mark for the first time. And for the Ulby fans, they are heading home. So is Lazarus Capital Developments. It was a bit of a shame for them. They had a, they had a comfortable lead when that trapeze wire broke. Right? Always the way, is it? Well, it was, I think, uh, pa past Eddie calls at the light bulb moment. It's always brightest before it goes bang, right? Yeah. And there's the new Noakes rocket ship <coughs> on the screen. Oaks on screen. Heading what? across to Bradley's. Are we happy with his sail signage? Like it's. Uh... We might we <laughs> might have to shout him a tin of spray paint to colour it in. Yeah, I think so. But it, as a whole, the boat looks fantastic. Yeah, Do you yeah. have a good look at it in the park, Cubby? Yeah, I didn't get a, a chance look, to have um, a, get over and have a look. They've been working very hard on their aero package, which seems to be the latest craze. Yeah. No. Dylan, our uh, drone pilot, the uh, obviously a boat builder as well, and Dylan did a bit of work on it um, before it hit the water with all the aero stuff and so forth. Right. Now look, it's very slick the boat, but uh, as we all know, if you have a bad spinnaker drop, there's years on screen from the drone. Yeah, looking a little bit deep, but anyway, oh. um, we'll get there. Finport just tacking. So Finport are probably trying to recreate their first beat cup. Yeah, look, he, he doesn't look that great at the moment. He's a little bit bowed down. But if he managed to get some sort of east out of this breeze, which looks like is coming from the top of the course, it, it might just sneak him back into a more reasonable position. Remembering he <coughs> was a clear leader up that halfway up that first work, and then he was lucky to come around the top mark in about eighth position. So. Um, he actually doesn't look too bad at the moment. Not at all. There's Andu. Just behind them is no sailing. Yeah, just below the screen. So Noak's not looking too comfortable in the upper range stuff, in fact, but that looks like a big sail, doesn't yeah, it? Like it's a uh, monster mainsail, isn't it? There's but, plenty well, of sail material there. I think they're both on the large side, to be honest, but uh, and for the viewers, there's no area measurement, so there's just a, a mast height necessarily, and a four-stay uh, extension position. Do what you like after that sort of thing. So, going back in for more. Fair enough. Good. I think he's um, <laughs> and Deuce is tacked to come back out from the Bradley's head side of the course. He's looking pretty comfortable there, Andrew, is he? So. Did this both days we had two races last week, Cubby, where they um, not so great in their first race, and the second race just warmed off up. Yeah. yeah, you got warmed so, up. Yeah, sort of like have a little trial match and then go yeah, right here, we'll show you how it's done. Hey, we've all uh, we've all been glued to the TV on um, on race days when watching the sale media coverage, so uh, it's been excellent. We're enjoying bringing it to everyone. It's a great little environment to be in. Okay, so for just a little update. Andu currently leads the race. We've got uh, Noakes sailing in second position and Balmain Slate just holding on to third and Finport potentially in fourth position. 
Everyone's uh, sniffing this left-hand side of the course this time after seeing what uh, Balmain Slake and Ilve did to the rest of the fleet up the first week. Yeah, well, these guys wouldn't actually be all that far off the ley line if the breeze maintains that uh, trajectory. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we'll see. Is that but, a problem on the nopes there, or you think... Well... A lot of layoff on that main. Looks like they can pull a few strings. Yeah, no, she's deep and twisted. Oh. Deep being the operative word, Jimmy, as you would notice. Mate, it's like a bathtub. Yeah. Like, there's a comparison between that and the fin port, which is just yeah. here, so we can give you, a, a, the viewers at home, a real, real quick look at the difference in the in them. That'll probably help Shane out from Doyle Sales as well. It's something needs to be done. Yep. Jake's sailing at a nice little lift there. Do you think she ought to be happy with his performance? Like, this is the, the full kit he wants to take to the JJ with him. Would you be happy at this stage? No. No, Bucko says. No. But, but you got to understand, Cubby, Bucko's never happy. No. Uh, he's a it's hard taskmaster. Coming hard left. Probably been good. OK. So, no sailing, probably. Uh, it's just about to cross with the Andu coming in from the right-hand yeah. side of the picture. Andu leads still. A few crosses you, you coming up here. big money on that, Bucko? No, not no. huge amounts. <laughs> still scratching around for that beer money, Yoja. It's, it's, it's going to be close. Andu, no sailing. Andu has right of way. Oh, easy work, Cup. Looked like a coat of paint to me. <laughs> <laughs> You must put it on pretty thick, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah. from Noddy School of Boat Building. Four boat went across, I would say. All right. Three so boat Nothing in the overall scheme of things. This is third place we're on here at the Finport. And he's... <laughs> Looks lovely. But whether it's fast enough and got enough tolerance is another question. I'll tell you what, Andrew's putting themselves into some danger over there, past the ley line and outside some traffic. He's, he's, um... And he's smeg going the other side of the, yeah. the harbour too. He didn't need to go there. No, and we're travelling with Keegan on the fin port. He's uh, highly grinding his way out onto the weather hip of Noakes. No sailing, tacking in the distance. Very slow tack. Finport tacking as well. Gone. <laughs> yep. Although. In that boat there, James Doran's boat, which was. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Lazarus. He's Lazarus and Smeg. <laughs> Lazarus on screen. I think the, the right hand side's right gonna hand side. gonna pay off this time. Okay. Yep. Smeg's just tacking in the the background behind uh, Lazarus. So yeah, Smeg had somebody in the boat repairing something a minute ago, Jimmy. So yeah, it looked like Zach was in there something yep. around the Vang area. Yeah. Yep. Um, well, they're hanging in there, trying to defend their second overall. Third overall, maybe. So Depends, well, because we can't drop today, this race, and Tech 2 is quite a while way back still. So is the Rag and Famish the last time we saw seen them. So the puzzle continues, Cub. And we're with Lazarus on the right edge <laughs> in downrange pressure now. Well, I like him being on the right hand side of the course. Interesting. So our, our race leader still, though, whilst we're not on them at the moment, but uh, Noakes Sailing is our race leader. He's probably the second quietest, quietest bloke in our fleet at the moment on screen. Cubby? <laughs> Smeg's tack back, so they're not liking the transition across to the other side at this stage. I think Smack, uh, Smig's um, just uh, given up a little bit of time there. He's zigging when he should be zagging and... <coughs> oh, 
Wow, so Lazarus has to bail anyway. Yeah, the action's on the left-hand side of the course at the moment, I think. Big line of new breeze rolling down the middle, cut. Yeah. Well, the boats that went furthest left have sort of hit that first, I think. Yeah. 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 I would expect Noakes will lead then. How about that? I, and he's well to windward of Andu as yeah, well. Yeah, if yeah, we yeah. He almost there. looks like he's overlaid. Yeah, so the, there's the, the shot the of the Andu, and that's the Noakes sailing directly behind him. Yeah. A, a, good, a couple of hundred metres, 100 metres up above him. And going high. Noakes sailing is sailing high. That's all he can do with that mainsail. <laughs> he, can, he can't foot. I think he, uh, he needs a hydraulic winch to pull the mainsail on, I think. God knows. We've got big Matty Coleman in, on the JBW. I think he'd be about the only person around that could pull that. Even on. then, we might need two Matty Coleman. <laughs> That's it. Anyway, well, is it possible to get two of them we, on one boat? We're giving him a hard time, but he leads the race, so here That's we go. Right. Yeah, there. Yep. They're only a few hundred metres away from the top mark for the last time, where they've got to round that top mark to port and head off down to the uh, to the finish line. Uh, you can just watch the top mark. So Noakes uh, still comfortable. That's uh, there we are on Noakes sailing now. Whatever we think, I'm pretty sure Sean's thinking that he'd be pretty happy with a win. No, absolutely. A lot of work oh. over a long period of time. OK. It's interesting, you know, the research and development that goes into the boats. You know, a lot of these races are won in, during the winter off-season when everyone's making the decisions about what they want to do for the following season. You know, no, they're right. He's been thinking long and hard about this one. Yep. And, you know, the, the different structure of the mains on the bottom easy to make a little error there about how the bottom part of the left curve actually works i would think and, uh, just got no sailing on screen at the moment our current race leader he's going to be pretty comfortable around this top mark got a 20 30 second lead do you think okay yeah from finport that's what it's looking like Attacking to lay the top mark for the last time. And not a heap of wind either. Ooh. It's just yeah. about to go round. Here's a bear just, away and just hopefully a, stay on this and you can see who does what inside yeah. the boat for it's a set. A straight set, starboard hand set. Oh, that's a windward set for these guys. Yeah. Round that windward spreader and stuck in the bag as well. Oh. Not good. Not You've got it all on screen, so no, this is not how you do it at home. No, no, no. <laughs> Jeez, they're struggling. It's caught big time. There's a bit of deck slapping there. Come on, there we go. All right. A little bit of extra shot cord for those spreaders, I think. I think so, yeah. yeah. And uh, just sneaking up in second position. Hello, Finport's got a bag of water there in the spinnaker. Noakes. Sorry, Noakes. Yep. They got it out. There we go. Wow, that that was the most a... nervous set I've ever seen. Yeah, no, it was a rattling moment, wasn't it? <laughs> Finport rounding in second position. All right, Noakes sailing off and away now. So I think Noakes would be reasonably confident their downwind speed's good enough here. Yeah, better set on the uh, yep. Finport. And Andrew in third, good enough to win them the title. Yeah, no, they're absolutely. They've got to get to that finish line there, Bucko. Yeah, and Smeg. <laughs> Smeg needs to beat Andu. Smeg at least yeah. at least two places back. Technique a lot better on the Andu. See uh, Sebi Jarvan Square right away. Allow the crew to get that spinnaker up past the spreaders. Spinnaker's set and away they go. Yeah, and when, when Matty Stenner pulls the rope, the thing, the thing on the other end goes. Yeah. No oh, discredit that? to the boys on on uh, Noakes, but the, I, I think when you got a little bit more time up your sleeve you know you, if you do all those little things correctly you, uh, yeah, big chance tech, of picking up take two in the background having a miserable day oh. at this point well the tech two unfortunately is not going to win this championship from there 
Uh, there is no chance. No chance in the and, world. And this is a line squall or something. Not okay. likely. But this, uh, Bucko, I don't think this race is over just yet. No, uh, no, no. no comfortable, you're... comfortable lead for no sailing, but he's in no pressure where he is at the moment. And he's driving out, just he, as you he, say that. He's just obeyed your sl subliminal message, Cup. Yeah. Drive back to the pressure. But he's got a good lead, so should be all right. And he's not in the contest, really. He's, you know... No, but, you know, if you... A win's a win. A win is a win. You're right. You're completely right. You're only as good as your last race anyway, Bucko. Is that right? Yeah, how'd you go yesterday? Had a good day out. <laughs> All right, here's uh, series leader and currently in third place, Andu on screen. With I a think Finport's <laughs> fallen for that same little trap, yeah. Cubby. Yep. yep, I think so. Gone to where the breeze ain't. Well, look, Andrew's got the, the benefit of being just slightly behind those two. If he wanted to jive away and stay in pressure, he certainly can do it from where he is. Yeah, he's doing a bit of marching up and down the wing. He's obviously What's... comfortable. There's some more breeze coming. Oh. And he's a big powerboat watch to test them. What could go wrong here, Cub? Well... Is that a Princess 65 or something for Pete's review? I mean, come I would have thought here that the Bradley's head side would pay on the run. Well, I'm just not seeing the pressure on this side at the moment. Well, I'm talking about the bit around Bradley's head itself, really. Yeah. You know, the bit that these guys are getting into now. You okay, know. okay. Although, there is one coming from over our shoulders, which is going to uh, suit Finport and Andu. Finport might be the first ones to get into it. Noakes uh, sailing as Jive back, so he's coming back to this leading group. Andy's happy to be there. Look from, I suppose if you're in third place, that's all he has to do. That's good enough for to winning the title. Yep. Good enough for me. And you know, so his worst race was the earlier race in the you know, whole regatta was the was the first heat this afternoon and uh, that's good enough. So he's he's counting first, seconds and thirds. To, Finport to, running out of room here, to he's gonna have regatta. to jive back shortly. Yes. <clears throat> you see the crew on Finport like Keegan's still down the back of the bus quite separated. If you looked at Andu just before, you'll see Sebi's quite forward on the on the wing uh, with Sammy and Matty sitting in, like, you know, trying to keep that crew weight all together is still very critical on 18-foot skiffs. Andu setting up to drive? Oh, no, they're not. Change of plan. Yes, they are. Yeah, it's on. No sailing coming back in from the left-hand side of screen. We'll see them in a few seconds. But this race is close. Yeah, and... Um, no, another powerboat for reviewing. Noak's going to lead pretty readily, but not by a huge margin. That's right. Know. Here we go. What a great race. Finport flogging to go over them. Noak sailing is right away on starboard. Still leading. And Noak's been working hard on longitudinal weight distribution cup. Yeah, look at them. And you see Josh on the front of the wing nearly, and the other two boys a little bit further back, but and Ed marching up and down in the puff. Back in the puff and forward in the lull. That's it. Great shot there. A little bit of breeze coming down the race course. We're going to see, see them get a little puff here in a minute. And no win in the middle of the Harbour Cup. No. So these guys be well advised to jibe though. So second and third just uh, run out of breeze there for a second. And do... These guys are starting to push their luck now. Very much. Got that yacht to lure it of them, they have to uh, be careful of. 
and do maybe up into second spot here, just slightly ahead of the fin point. That yacht. Yeah, that's okay. It's Satori <coughs> in the background. Okay. Okay. Just a went... bit of traffic for. No, it just went a bit too far there, but yep. no great harm done. But it would have been better to have jived about 10 lengths earlier. Yep, anyway, the cameras, fight. the cameras are on the race for second, third, Finport advantage at this point. But probably Andrew confident. No, they're not going to try and soak. They're going to try and. Just well, they don't need to. They, they don't, don't need to no. get involved in anything, do they? No, they no, don't. They've just they got to keep don't. a clean pair of heels between here and the. Here on the finish line. Yeah. Just running down here with a little bit of new breeze as well. So, uh, fair bit of concentration on the faces of some of our friends here. Indeed. Yeah, and it's been a pretty tricky day, hasn't it, Cub? Yeah, Luke. And Andrew's jibe. Um, just on thin pot there on screen. I'm not sure how much. Here goes uh, thin port. They're going to have to. Oh, their thin port has gone very soft. I think Sean Langman's probably done a good job in the name sailing. He's uh, just out of screen, but he's 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 got a loose cover on second and third, so that's a good thing. And he's run out of wind too, though. It's kind of weird down here under the headland, isn't it? Got yeah. going again now. He'd be well advised to drive, I think. But Andrew here and no great pressure either. <laughs> anyway, camera's on Noakes. So we've got Andrew. Andrew now. We've actually got Balmain Slate coming down from behind in pressure. So uh, he's just going to come onto screen shortly from the right-hand side with the orange spinny cut. He's, um, he's just bought some wind from somewhere. There's Balmain Slate. He's now in the mix. He's probably sitting in third spot at the moment. Well, he's, as you said, Cup, sometimes it's not too bad to be behind. You can watch the, you know, what happens to the choices made by the guys yep. in front of you. Yep. He has Alright, now mate Slate, who we think's in around fourth spot with the orange vinegar. So the breeze is all lifted off down here near the finish line, making it very difficult. I think they would, uh, Sean's going to be losing a few fingernails here. But here he goes, he's yep. got a little bit of wind now. And just looking to the left of the uh, Noak sailing, there's a puff on the water which might just be saving grace. Get him down towards the finish line. He's just got a bit of pressure there. There's Andu in the background. Yeah. And no, he's Lazarus. Done. I think he's got a couple on the trapeze now. No sailing. Yep. And Sean that... doing his Woody impersonation, sitting on the inner wing, wing bar. Yep. The, the, the older gentleman's wing bar, it's called, Jones. <laughs> we re renaming boat parts. That's right. Anyway, no sailing is very close to the finish line, uh, about 60 metres from the finish line now. Excellent. And the smeg with a bit of a late charge too, Cub, if you look out the back of your and head. Finport not on screen. At the other end. At Come the on. other end. Are going to win. Maybe. If they've got pressure, they'll win. Okay. Uh... Yeah, we're, we're not seeing Finn Ford in on screen at the moment, but he's he's got the short end of the finishing line off screen. But I think maybe Noakes Sailing's just got there. Yeah, Noakes has just got there. Oh my word, it's close. Yeah, it'll be Finn Ford at the far end of the finish line. And Andrew third, third. Here comes our Australian champion, Andrew. Well done. Congratulations. They'll be happy about that. And fourth position is going to be close. But it's looking, be... looks like Smeg, no. but we've also Smeg got Lazarus Capital there. Partners. Yep. Smeg, fourth. Lazarus Capital Partners, fifth. Balmain's like coming in for six, probably. Yeah, just drop back a little. They, geez, they were doing well there. 
So what's that make for Seve, Cubby? That's eight now. Seve and I were having this discussion in the park. I think that's his eight, but obviously not all the crew have sailed with him for that amount of time. Yeah. I'm not sure about Sam Newton. Is, uh... Sam's been with him for quite some time. This is Katut's first year with him. So right. I think it's... Um... Yeah. All right. Matty Stenter, his first Australian. OK, so... Uh... For the Andu crew, it's a big congratulations, and uh, they now need to make their way over to the JBW and receive the championship ribbon from Die Homes. Yeah. So, yeah. for the viewers offshore of the killer, no, there's no protesting. The, the bookie pays the bets as they finish, and so does the uh, presentation ceremony. I didn't even need to sort it out in the car, but... And the tradition is that you get the ribbon from the ferry, and it's a bit of a tricky thing to hoist. <laughs> and appliance online, just going to pip Ant Yandu here, Cub. Yes. And I'm looking up the track, and I'm... A uh... couple of your picks for the day. Yeah. Commentator's curse. Right. I'll be... Stay away from rank, him eh? if you want to be, Cub. Mate, I'm, I'm done. I'll have to give up this commentating thing. It's gone light up the course as well, so uh, yeah. become a bit of a long day, hasn't it? Oh. I think Sean it just makes it worse, doesn't Sean it? Sean Partner's going to get tenth, Rag eleventh. Comes Sean Partners. There's a bit of spectator traffic out here this afternoon as well, so creating a fair bit of interest at the moment. Yeah, well, beautiful day, early early autumn, in fact, I suppose, or late summer. Yeah. Okay, Rag and Femish heading towards the finish line, albeit a bit behind the group. On screen, making making way to get the spoils. Jimmy, Tech Two just finishing now. Well, disappointing day for the Tech Two. That was uh, their first race was was excellent. Just couldn't keep it together for that second one. I think it was a little bit of confusion for the end. I think he was looking for the ferry. So basically, just for the viewers, uh, we're waiting now for Andu to make his way over to uh, the official vessel for the day, the JBW, which you can see on shot at the moment. They're going to be awarded, um, it's more of a tradition, uh, the winner of the championship traditionally gets a, a ribbon for winning the uh, Australian Championships and uh, they're going to come alongside JVW. <coughs> Probably tie that ribbon to their spinnaker halyard and hoist it up the mast. So this is a hundred, hundred year piece of tradition really. Experts on the oh, all the experts, the, the, the oh, beer experts on the JBW. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Noddy's in there. Things will be okay. 
And what they're trying to do is uh, prepare a rubber ducky alongside the JBW so the Andu doesn't damage itself when it comes alongside. They're going to use the rubber ducky as uh, basically a giant fender and um, try and minimise any uh, damage to either the Andu or the JBW. I'm sure, I'm sure Stay could be fine with a nice little scratch down the side of it, Cubby. Well, it, you know, you know what he's like. <laughs> he can be a bit precious. I hope he's got the music on, that's all I can say. I don't think he plays it. You, I think you're it. <laughs> all right, we're getting close. We're starting to shape up. And do coming in for the final approach, I dare say. We've got Di Holmes is standing right beside Steamer Stanley there with the ribbon. Probably would have been uh, better if the JBW could be a bit more head to win. It's going to make it difficult. Yeah, it's not a. Uh, there you go. I think Stakey's listening to you or whoever. <coughs> we'll Straight have forward, go. to be honest. Yeah. Head to sure head, if we head, can head, just head. pan a little bit right and uh, there's a rubber another rubber ducky beside the end uh, just in picture now the great Ian Murray himself who's been uh, coaching the Endu team yeah. just watching over the proceedings there he is the white hat on there Ian Murray um, Jethro 18 foot skiff legend Six world championships for the big fella. Here they go. Oh, I think we've forgotten about everything else. They've, got the, they've got the job done. <laughs> it's, me it's messy. It is a bit messy. Yeah. The Yandu head to win would have been a good plan, wouldn't it? Yeah, That's yeah. the JBW. Yes. <laughs> anyway, they're getting it done. Oh. oh, wrong answer, you blokes. <laughs> so, and as another tradition, out of courtesy, the fleet hangs around to observe yeah. and allow the winner to be the first boat back to the ramp. I think it was my grandmother who once said, when the beer's in, the wits are out. This there we go. Look, we've got the ribbon. You can see. And they've made the hoist and, in a, there in we a go. good fashion. Right? Maybe they... Oh, yeah, they have got the hoist done. Yep. Yeah, made the hoist. So for the viewers, the ribbon is actually three small ribbons tied together, one for each bloke. Sebi, Matty Stenner in the middle and Sam Newton in the bow. A very strong-looking team, Jimmy. Very strong looking team. Um, yeah, mate, a class act. They, um, you know, look, we're always talking about Tech 2 and how, you know, they're a very polished team. This, you've got to remember, Matt Stenner's new into the Andu team. Yeah. Brand new combination this year, and they're already hitting their strides, which is fantastic to see. Yeah, um, you know, Matty's no slouch like ex 16 national champion. Uh, now he's got an 18 championship. No. Aussie to go with it as well. And, and, and you know, I think a pretty good camp, Tebbman. You know, which you know, which is a bit bit Sam Newtonish, you know, and so you know, I, I think it might they might be pretty good. Yeah, and as you can see here, all the all the fleet are all hung around, which is as you said was is tradition to um, you know chaperone the new champion in to the beach. Yeah, and then see if we can get him and throw him in the drink, right? Uh, I'm not, sure that'll always never happen. Not yeah. so much. <laughs> Any, anyway, Trebs, we've done a got the abacus out, got the point score, I think, roughly correct here. So Andu wins 14 points. Smeg scratch around today to get second and 18 points. Third tech two. Fourth rag and famish. Sorry. Fourth and fourth and fifth. Lazarus Capital Partners and Yandu tied on points, separated in favour of Lazarus Capital Partners. So 
Yandu is fifth. Rag and Fam is sixth. Nug Sailing seventh. Finport Finance. And for the viewers, eighth. they're they're very provisional. They're yep. Bucko's numbers. And ninth Yandu. So yeah, don't take us for gospel. Check back at both International 18s Facebook page, um, Instagram, and also at the Sale Media Facebook page and Instagram page. We'll post the uh, the overalls there as well. Don't forget, if you are liking what we're doing out here, don't forget to hit the like button. It is somewhere there, sh Shippo. After we're, we're, it's got a little thumbs up like what's on the screen now, so. Uh, find that, click on that on the left hand side and um, yeah, if you've got any comments feel free to leave them and we'll do our best to get the answers for you. We've got a few little surprises in store for the upcoming JJ's which we're going to be working on over the next week or two so we look forward to everyone tuning back in. Bucko, Cubby, thanks heaps for joining us. Always a pleasure to have you on board. My pleasure, Jimmy. Thanks for having me. Uh, look, you get a different perspective of the racing um, on board the Camera Cat and uh, to see what goes on behind the scenes, to see how Sail Media brings his presentation to, to the wider audience and around the world, from what I understand, it's, uh, it's my hat's off to you guys and um, good luck with the rest of the season. Thanks, Cubby. Marco? Yeah. So, viewers, that's it for today from the... Mighty Camera Cat, and um, same time next week, as Jimmy said. Um, thanks to Jimmy, Caleb, Cub, Piers, Dylan, and Chits. Technical team in the back. Thanks for watching, everybody. We hope you can join us again one week from today for a championship race, I believe, for the club. On the same time, same place. Over and out.